Cool boo woo hoo. It's Hotline League episode 67. I'm so excited to be getting into this show. It's going to be a jam packed. You know why? Because we it's an extra day. Uh, normally you do the show on Mondays, but a fire broke out underground near my apartment yesterday. So we had to delay it today. And uh, here we are. Uh, so there's even more to talk about. It's like an extra special episode where you get an extra seventh of. You know, because it's an extra day. Whatever, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we're joined by Crumbs. I'm going to introduce him in a second. But first off, I want to thank Alienware for their support. Let me throw their logo up on the screen so that uh, everyone knows that they're supporting the show. I'm going to talk a little bit about them uh, later on. Uh, but thank you so much to their support of Hotline League. Uh, now, let's get into the show. First off, Mark Zimmerman, my constant co-host. How's it going, Mark? I waited for all that to ask you. Did you start that with cool or coup? Cool boo, boo -hoo -hoo. cool boo woo hoo. There shouldn't have been an L because it should just be a bunch of double O words like coo boo woo hoo. But look, the L ruined the whole show for me. <laughs> I don't think that's how it. It should be all rhyming. <laughs> that was the first thing that happened in the show. Mark, how you been? I mean, lately? it's amazing how quickly Travis can ruin a show. How's this past week been going for you? Uh, good. We finally fucking put out the D&D &D episode of, uh, for Offline TV, which is super hype, and I really like it, and I'm proud of it, and it's cool. And then we also put out the Nade Shot episode with uh, the detention thing. That was also yeah. really good. So it was a good good week for me. The audio is impeccable. That's my favorite part of the show, I think. Which one? Both of them. The but audio is fine for the, the detention one. Especially the first one. The Jimmy Wong one is we had some uh, we so we always shot in the ba well not always but for for a while we've been shooting in the basement and we used to have these big couches in there and more stuff that would break up the sound and then we cleared all of it out and we, we would just use two overhead boom mics to capture everything and it was fine yeah uh and then we cleared everything out for these sets that we built uh and obviously there's not as much stuff that would break up the sound so the first time we, we shoot it's like whoa we got an echo problem yeah um Roden said when he showed up on set, he knew there was going to be audio issues, but he didn't say anything. Well, by, by that point, we had already shot the first detention thing, so we knew there were audio issues. Okay. We just didn't have time because we shot that like two days later, so we didn't have time for a solution. Well, what else is going on with you? I don't want to... Oh, my God. Crumbs? Crumbs? I'm going to go ahead and... I muted him. Okay, I was about to... Okay, hopefully he can get that solved. Um, uh, my audio issues are nowhere near as bad. Yeah, we were just talking about audio issues, and then Crumbs plugs in a new microphone and starts, it starts going crazy. Um, well, I don't, I don't know when to unmute him. I'm nervous about unmuting him because I feel like it's gonna. Let's let's give try it, it again. Give it a one. Give it. Okay, a, I'll here. I'll get ready to click mute again. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. You you click unmute. I click mute. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, but yep. I feel like it's using a weird I microphone. Can maybe you. pull your microphone out on the headset? I don't think the headset's working either. You can't hear us. You said. Okay. Well, glad we 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 started trying to fix this after the show started. Any, what else is going on with you, Mark? I mean, that's that's mostly it. Um, I'm watching The Bachelor, so I watched the first uh, episode of the finale tonight. But I've been surprised by how many people I respect. Yeah watch the bachelor and i'm not saying it's by the way that i respect so... you i'm just saying that like, i am surprised it's actually so bad it's terrible i hate it but i love it all right it's absolute trash get this too there's like 23 seasons of the bachelor Hello. only hey, Crumbs, one of them is still still together okay oh really yes i mean it's like i would that doesn't surprise me ever. i don't think that the bachelor is a good way to find a potential mate no it's it's legitimately the worst but i, I like well, the actually, people who... that Raj Patal show on Twitch, that might be worse than The Bachelor. No, I bet it's not. I bet if they were actually looking for love and attempting yeah. to, to, to make yeah, relationships yeah, happen as opposed to just make a bunch of meme shit, it'd probably yeah. be better than this show. Yeah. Well, that might be true. Just this is normally the part where I would introduce... Oh, can you hear us, Crumbs? No. This is normally the part where I would have Crumbs tell his week and talk about what's going on with him and welcome to the show but he's still working on that uh so i am going to talk about me my favorite subject uh we had uh, so sorry oh. by the way to everyone who tried to tune in yesterday to watch the show uh the power went out at kobe in my apartment kobe in my my apartment 
And uh, it turns out that there was an underground fire somewhere nearby, mm -hmm. which took out the power and the internet yeah. for a long oh. time. Is that like in the sewers if it's underground or is it like... I think it's in the sewers, uh -huh. yeah. Can you hear us, okay. Crumbs? We can hear you, buddy. Anyway, yes, it was in the sewer or something because there was a... They closed off a road so they could get into the manhole and do all this kind of crazy stuff. I don't know. Well, that was the exciting well, thing that I dealt with yesterday. From my, my huh? <laughs> Crumbs. I just want to... I want it to be known, because there's going to be YouTube <laughs> comments eventually, that say, Travis, why don't you put any effort into the show? You should try to get people on earlier so that you can test out their audio. Crumbs was on before this, and at the beginning of the show, Hello? his audio was oh. working fine. And now we're having this issue. Hi, we can hear you. Hello? That's strange. Yeah, yeah. But why is it sound for sound everything, thing everything in my computer, computer except, except for, Skype. for Skype? You don't yeah. need Skype sound. You mean Discord? We, we don't use Skype. We don't use Skype for sound. We use Discord. Oh, there it is. Oh, there Discord. it is. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Hear you now. You're okay, echoing. Now. Okay, I think yeah, you're echoing, yeah, on, you're Skype echoing on Skype again. So, this headset just happens to turn off every so often. Great. Is it? Is it going to blow up our ears every so often, too? Okay, well, anyway, so let's hope that, so this is going to go. Crumbs, how have you been? Welcome to the show. I can't hear you guys anymore. Well, Mark, back to you. How's, <laughs> what else is going on in your life? Uh, I'm very happy I stole Broden from you. Does he still work for you at all? Yes. Fuck. Although he has okay, been... there we go. There we go. Okay. okay well, let me just finish this. Broden has been getting increasingly more uh, difficult. Taller? What? Taller? He's been getting taller? No, he's not getting no. taller. He's getting more difficult because he's... I have introduced him to a bunch of people, and so he's done work for Golden Guardians and Ateo and you guys at Offline, and I'm trying to get him to do stuff for me, and he's just like, eh, you can do that. I needed a logo, a copy of our logo, for like a week. Didn't get it to me pain in the ass was Everyone that when he was in so india great. what's that was that when he was in india no this was recently i don't know what's going on with him crumbs how are he you he was in india recently i'm doing great okay <laughs> he, have, have, he couldn't yeah, get you a logo glad to have you on the show uh what <laughs> how's your past week been filled with the lcs yeah well yeah, that was about it really just preparing for that and doing that well Glad to have you on. How's your yeah, your you. how's this week going so far? Well, I'm a friend here, so I'm just hanging out. Great. Glad really, that's pretty much it. Glad to hear. Yeah, glad I haven't been hear. doing much else besides that. Yeah. Learn, watching league, playing league, still hoping for the rank reset to come through. Well, it's supposed yeah. didn't they confirm it's going to happen? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. You said hoping, I felt like, so I didn't I didn't know if they had... Oh, well, that's how I felt most of the time, and then now I'm just hoping that the time goes by faster so that I can just uh, get back to... Gotcha. Man, I just can't wait to, to keep not playing League. Yeah. What do you play? Auto Chess. I've been playing a lot of Skyrim recently for no reason. That's and Civ 6. Really? So my girl... So, get this. My girlfriend and James, Dash, are, like, the same person in terms of, like, things they've they've done, like... Neither have played Skyrim, neither have watched Naruto, neither... Ah, oh, there's one other thing that, that neither of them had just done that blew my mind. Neither of them knew what Crackling Oat Brand was. So I keep... I was talking to my girlfriend about playing Skyrim, so then I started playing Skyrim, and then I was talking to James about it, and he didn't play it either, so I just talked about Skyrim so much, I just had to play it. I went back Is and finished... Time playing Skyrim? What's that? Is that your second time playing Skyrim? Like, fifth. I've played hundreds of hours of this game. I went back and finished Dragon Age Inquisition recently because I was right at the end of that game years ago and never finished it, and then I went back and finished it. So it felt like a good moment. Let's talk about League Fortnite of Legends. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're talking about everything that isn't League of Legends. Uh, what is the big stuff that's happened this week? The 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 finally Everyone the rubber needs band. Afro move. Yes, exactly. I was gonna say finally. Well, first there was the. It was a slow build of we hate Athermu. Athermu is the worst person ever. Athermu killed my mother, and then it, it like snapped back Damn. to everyone's too mean to Athermu. You guys should not be so toxic. 
And now it's, what are you talking about? We should be able to say whatever we want about pro players. And here we are today on the show. So there's I that. Like the pen- What's that? The pendulum has swung more than usual on this topic. Yes. I'm getting nauseous just looking at the pendulum every day. Never know if we're going to, it's a hate Aphromoo day or a or layoff Aphromoo day. So we'll, of course, talk a lot about well, that. Well, is it 100 Thieves Day? Or is it, well, exactly. It's kind of one of the same, right? 100 yeah. Thieves thing is happening. We will talk about 100 Thieves on the show for the first time in multiple weeks, I think, because we were laying low. The 100 T subreddit put a hit out on our our head for, because this is the, they think we're like the ultimate you know, haters. I heard you talking about that so much. I went to, I actually went to be like, is, the, is there really a 100 Thieves subreddit? And then I went to it. Yes. I mean, yes. So they don't like us. The only thing we've said about 100 Thieves recently is like laughing about the subreddit, actually. Yes. I think we've talked more about the subreddit in recent weeks than, than actually. Well, and I 100. think the subreddit's talked more about us in recent weeks than about the team. <laughs> Both of us need each other to yes, <laughs> yeah, make exactly. a blind eye towards the team. We, we <laughs> need each other for content. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, what else is uh, interesting that's happened? Uh, in the past week. I mean, I guess we're winding down. We've only got two more weeks left of the regular split. Uh, of Clump course, is dead. What's that? Well, in terms of games, Griffin versus SKT was really exciting. Whoa, 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 whoa. We only talk about NA here. Yeah. Although I did G-Pet. hear it was pretty exciting. It was really good. I watched it. Was it? Was it? Because people were saying it was really good, but also kind of bad. I mean, there were like some some late game macro calls that looked like they would have fit in in NA, but like they weren't they weren't honestly that bad. They, it was fine. Yeah, I mean, come on, that would have been taken with honor as an NA game. With <laughs> well, so I mean, much honor that's true. Pride. We would take their worst games any day. I agree with that. No, no, come on, no, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Everyone's worst games are really bad. Um. So there's that. We've got a couple of weeks left, and we can really start honing in, I think, right now on who's going to make playoffs and what does playoffs look like because uh, we're only two weeks out from that. And, yeah, I mean, anything else that people want to talk about? I mean, I feel like people should have a lot of strong opinions on the show. Um, I think that's it. Mark, do you want – I mean, we've wasted enough time trying to get everything set up. Do you want to explain how the show works? Yeah, I mean – Obviously, we have crumbs on, so for people who haven't talked before, this is a good episode because we can talk a lot about uh, teams and crumbs coming back. So the way this show works, uh, right now I'm spamming Twitch chat with a link to the Discord. You're going to go ahead and join up. When you get here, there's going to be pub calls and pub calls to voice channels. Go ahead and join one of those voice channels. You need to be in one of them in order for me to take you and your question to the waiting room. Uh, once you are in one of those voice channels, in the text channel above it, Pleb Topics, go ahead and post what your take is. Uh, you know, you think 100 Thieves are going to rally somehow, make playoffs. You think they're dead. You think Optic's going to drop. Uh, whatever your take is, go ahead and put it there. And then if we like it, we will take you from that voice channel that you're in and stick you in the waiting room where you will wait until it's your turn. We'll hop in, do a quick audio check, and then you'll be good to go. There you go. And if you are and like a sub, I said, actually, because Crumbs is on, we can also just talk about Crumbs coming back, yes. which is a big deal, I think. Yep. Uh, I did an interview with Crumbs, which is up on my channel right now. Um, you, didn't, you didn't tweet out. I didn't see anything. That yeah, I've gotten tweeting. worse about tweeting out interviews because I find that is it personal. People don't click personal. through that often. No, it's like people don't click through that often. I worry that I, if I tweet out every interview, it just gets like spammy. So I've been trying to do it a little less. I don't know. I've got mixed feelings. Um, anyway, if you are a sub, thank you for being a sub. And you can also get access to, make sure you link your Discord to Twitch so that you can get access to the Subtopics channel. Uh, that moves a little bit slower, so if you want to get on the show, you can put your question in there. Uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of a leg up on the plebs, the non-subs. And I believe Mark should be pulling people uh, any second. Uh, no, I'm since... tweeting. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I'll retweet your tweet. All right, there's my tweet. That's out. Yeah. Now I can go pull topics. Excited. Exciting. I've seen you guys have all sorts of topics on here. How do you feel oh, about yeah. the general reception to you coming back, Crumbs? Because I feel like people are pretty po- positive. Yeah, it's been overwhelmingly positive. It's like open arms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people seem... Really, it's been, it's been super awesome. Um, 
I couldn't, I wouldn't ask for it. It's like, wow, this is pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I think people, it's, people are just excited to have you back. I think it's kind of fun because a lot of people like well, leave. The thing is, I don't back. even consider myself being there long and uh, long enough to say, have me back. Like, I, it I mean, wasn't you that were definitely long around and you... as, as, uh, like in the NALCS, yes, it was more of like a few splits and then the international events. And yeah, but, a player that would show up on the show. Yeah, but international events, I feel like, are like pretty high profile. Like, if you're on those, people feel like you're part of the broadcast team, you know? I guess they would assume everybody's from the same. Like, they see it as one collective broadcast team. Right. Right. <laughs> well, that makes sense. How are we looking, Mark? We got a lot of good, like, uh, hot prediction takes. Okay. Well, I'm excited. Maybe we don't need to get, like, tons of those, but... I'm excited to see what people have to say. Oh, that's want... all of them are, baby. Oh, great, great. Well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go poll? Okay. They asked me think. to predict their love lives. <laughs> and you know what the, the tragedy of the name is? That there's a lot of hardcore Christian groups that tag everything that has profit attached to it. Oh, really? And since my name has that, I get tagged in like all sorts of things with like that essentially look like email chain scams, but in Twitter form. Because you're talking just about how your your Twitter handles profit people. crumbs, so yes. people just tag profit. And I even get DMs with people saying, "Could you do a blessing for me, sir?" Yeah. Well, I hope I hope Which, everyone watching this show not because they know from leak but from actually like I would like you to bless me. I believe in your powers. Yeah, I hope I hope that everyone listening to the show pulls you or asks you for blessings. They won't. They won't. They'll DM you. Uh, we've got Keynes on the show. Keynes, is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah, you got it right. A lot of people call me Keynesy. That's a uh, pretty rough. Hey, listen, I always get the names right on the show. I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of with Hotline League. Um, I hope. First off, thanks for being a sub. And where are you calling from? Uh, just a little bit far out from Toronto. Okay. So Greater Canada. Toronto area. Canada, yeah. So you're Canadian. Yep. You know that crumbs also wait, crumbs are you are Canadian, right? My passport says Canada. My ID says Canada. Where in Canada? Parents live in Canada. Vancouver. Okay. We're completely different. Yeah. Weren't well, you born in, in Venezuela? Yeah, I was born in Venezuela, but they both start with a V. There you go. Yep, that's that's true. They both start with me. <laughs> Vanada. Gaines, what do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Uh, I was going to be the one that brings up, you know, 100 Thieves and Aphromoo. And, you know, 100 Thieves, oh, Aphromoo, all the hate and criticism on Aphromoo is warranted. I think it's excessive, but like 100 Thieves needs to do something about player motivation. And I guess, what did I say? Oh, yeah, they just need to look at like practice and. Yeah, they need to make their team look like, you know, actually a team other than five solo players. So are you, when you say like they need to do something about motivation, are you implying that the players are lacking motivation? I think that, yeah, they're not going to, they're not trying to win. They're trying to not look bad at this point. If you watch like the heist, they just look like depressed all the time. Like uh, these guys are like done and yeah, they need to do something about uh, player motivation. Well, I think there's a difference between motivation and mentality or morale, which I believe is what you're kind of indicating, right? Because I'm there's a separate discussion to be had. There's maybe these are two different discussions. One are the but that still affects motivation, though. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like I, I'm saying that like motivation. yeah, you see you see um, all these hundred these players, and I don't know. It doesn't seem like right from the get go that they are trying to uh, trying to be the best like i guess that's motivation right like it just seems like they were you know they expected to win and you know there's like yeah everything's going good we're gonna win everything blah 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 like i mean that's what it sounded like you know scrim's going good blah like stuff like that right you're you're right that morale affects motivation uh but i the reason why i'm trying to separate this out is because there are a lot of people i think who say oh those players are just they're not motivated to win they're just collecting a paycheck like they say Afro oh, is just no. there to collect a paycheck and all that stuff. That's not what you're trying to say. No, no, no. I think, like, you know, uh, they actually, they care about 
like the game and they obviously uh, want to keep their jobs because if they underperform they don't care about the paycheck and that much right like if they underperform they're not going to have a paycheck um so yeah it's like their i guess it, morale motivation yeah yeah well we just lost but, crumbs but i oh he's back Okay, so this is perfect because I, I appreciate you bringing this up because we've got two people here who are both on teams in the past that have had huge issues, Mark and Crumbs. And I'm kind of curious, like, what what is it like when a team is just failing hard? And maybe you guys can speak a little bit to, you know, how do you get the morale to turn around? Is that what's affecting 100 Thieves? What do your guys take? Uh, I mean, I'm that. sure the morale is bad. Huh? Oh, I was just saying, I'm glad he phrased the question that way. Yeah. Am I the one lagging? No, I don't think you're lagging. Mark? Who's Mr. Robot towing? Am I Mr. Robot towing? Or oh, is, you're, uh, you're definitely Mr. Mr. Robot. Oh, I did the lights because I saw in one of your episodes, and your episodes you usually have that. The we lights do have dim there. lights. But hey, while Mark, I think Mark is having some internet issues. Crumbs, what do you think about 100 T's situation from like a morale perspective and a motivation issue? And. And I don't know, maybe you can speak also from some experience where there were times where Dig and, and other teams have had issues. Exactly. So, yes, I definitely know that the situation from my personal experience. And I think that in 100 Thieves, a big issue is kind of the expectations that the players have, as well as the actual language barrier that they have to go through the communication barrier and how that affects it itself inside the game like if you see a match where you have five players that can all can speak the same language that are say from the you know they've been playing together in solo queue for who knows how long that's just them how do they behave outside the game how do they behave in the game and it's just constantly talking to each other in every way possible right they're hanging out they're talking, they're texting, they're playing in game. And when you have a language barrier and a cultural barrier that is so sharp, as well as the expectations that you have of coming to a new place with all these new players with, okay, what do I know about these players? How do I, I've never seen a region before. How does that work together inside the team? It just, it makes it really difficult that when that does not happen, the players want to say, okay, I want to keep trying in this. And so the players are just like, well, it, it, this was really not what I thought it, it was going to turn out to be. Things are far from how I envisioned it to be. And you, in a way, end up having players saying, yeah, we're only here for a paycheck, but that's because the paycheck is the only thing left that is keeping you wanting to be there. So that's how I, that's how I ends up feeling that way. But it's just that the players and the coaching staff needs to help with the relationships between players and the expectations of what the team is in at the moment, not what they thought it would be because everyone keeps talking about potential and potential all the time. You, yeah, yeah. What is it? What about a hundred thieves? It's always potentially. Yeah. They should be amazing. They should be amazing. And that just hurts the team so much more. So internally, they're definitely, obviously the staff is thinking about potential. That's why they signed that team. But at the end of the day, that is, the expectations that the players have and that the coaching staff needs to solve in order to get rid of the morale problem. Yeah. I think um, having when we were bad on Curse and a little bit Team Liquid, like, we had, you know, bad morale. And, I, you know, anytime your morale is bad, it's going to somewhat affect your motivation. But it was never like we didn't continue to try solo queue and, and scrims and stuff like that. Like... No one, no one checked out ever for us, um, and I think that's why we always rallied. Like we always finished better than we started, or in the middle. Like we made playoffs, we always made it through the first round in playoffs. Always made like semifinals, um, and so I, I don't know if that's what's happening on Hundred Thieves. Like I think it'd actually be really useful to go check their solo queue accounts. I don't know all of them, so I, I probably can't do this. But like we on Team Liquid, and I think on Curse as well, had some of the highest games played uh, in solo queue on our team because we just were like, well, we're going to keep grinding because that's like all we can do. And that was our mentality. And if they don't have that mentality, then I do think it's fair to question their um, motivation in a sense, because like, you know, there's, you can be smarter than people or you can work harder. And if you're losing, it's a lot easier to work harder than people. <laughs> and See, so what, like, just in <laughs> it's interesting you bring this up because one of the rumors I have heard 
It's a soft rumor, everyone. Please don't take this as me reporting. Oh, on I it. like hard rumors. Oh, we get rumors on the show? Yes. Oh, we don't give a fuck. Oh, really? We don't report anything. We're not a news channel. All right. I like this. Anyway. Uh, so the one of the soft rumors I've heard is that the 100 Thieves coaching staff and the team and org have just sort of doubled down. Like, okay, we need to work even harder and harder and harder and harder until the point where, like, the... There's a ch like they are waking up doing this stuff until they go to sleep uh, and it's they might be kind of on the verge of burning out uh, oh, and man. it might be like too much almost. Uh, this is one of the things that I've heard where it's just like they're always around each other so much and it's just uh, it almost it'd be better in a world where they were all kind of able to take a step back and just like refresh because maybe they're just too hung up on this. I don't know if this is a thing that can happen. It's like, uh, what was it? Wasn't it Apex that they had a week where they didn't grim? And then that was the week that they just beat everybody by... They were just like, oh my god, this team is amazing. And they just didn't play for a week. Yeah. I mean, we've I heard that before, so... I don't want to associate, like, oh, too much practice is bad. It's just, like, I'm thinking that, like, is the 100 Thieves practicing, like, wrong? Because we hear uh, there was a long interview with Bang after he left SKT. Right, and he was saying that the highest moments of you know SKT when they're undefeated and whatever they're performing the best. That's when they are practicing the hardest. So I don't want to say like, oh yeah, you practice too much, you burn out 100%. Um, maybe they're just practicing wrong, like they're not focusing where they should be. Because uh, and you know th that's obviously reflected in their play. We saw like um, I said earlier that the uh, hate on Afromu is like you know a bit excessive because like. What's happening is these players are n not communicating the way they want, and it might be due to language barrier, but at the same time, it's just like... Some really, really tough thing to say, just, you know, follow these phrases, blah, 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 like, canon coming, blah, blah, blah stuff like that. I have a theory. Sorry, can you repeat the last part? Because uh, I had about a three-second lag spike. Oh, okay. No, it was just like, oh, so if the language barrier is such a big deal, then, like, why don't they try to get their Korean players to say something that's easier for them? Like, you know, you hear, uh, I was, uh, there's a mic check or, if, you know, um, Faker just says, I can ult flash in a fuck in the, uh, what's it called? Um, what was that game mode? Uh, that special game mode they played at um, All-Stars. Nexus Canada? Blitz? Nexus Blitz? I think that's what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, just like, uh, so everybody understands that. So I'm just thinking, like, don't you, especially with AD carry and top lane, I don't think that there's any excessive communication. They could just say, like, maybe they're tackling. Yeah, but they don't, they, they don't really, to just to cut you off, they don't really have, like, bad communications. If you bang, if you yeah. saw, was on the LCS cooldown this weekend, and he's, like, just hanging out with a bunch of people speaking English, and he's doing mm -hmm. fine. Like, He's conversational, well, basically. I think I what, what Travis said is actually re could be really relevant, considering a lot of teams have apartments. And think of somebody, say, specifically after since That's who we're talking about. He's 26. I'm 26. The last thing, the last place I would want to be at 26 is inside a gaming house. Just like I would never want to be there, like that to live there. Like I would want to be in apartments. If I know all these teams are getting apartments, like I want to have other things. And professional athletes have that established for our, like as the norm. And so, as players are getting older, I'm sure you want to just get out of there. And if just there, if there's just any extra semblance of practice of just hanging out there, it feels more like a slave house for sure. I mean, if you're burnt out. Week fucking seven of spring retirement. No, but it's not. It's not <laughs> I mean, burnt seriously. out. Though. It's not burnt I, out. I know, but. But Travis, to Travis's point, because Travis brought it up, like if if you're burnt out at this point, like you need a break. You need I don't to do think it's necessarily two. that they're burnt out. It's that they are just. I it's not burnt out in the traditional sense of like, wow, we've been working too hard in this week seven. It's like they are just in this endless cycle where they are not able to like mentally refresh after all these losses, and they spend all day practicing, and it doesn't get them anywhere. And they are just like breaking themselves upon this thing. I actually do wonder if there's a world where they took, if they like swapped to Academy for a week and they brought the Academy mm -hmm. team in and then brought them back to LCS, if that would actually like suddenly improve a lot so, of their performance because they oh, just have that oh, refresh. Okay. So just to give an, uh, a comparison, if you've got 
a horse trainer and the horse misbehaves in a competition, whose fault is it? Who do you like? Who do you attribute usually the the lack of whatever in the, the horse. horse to the horse or to the trainer? No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah, almost the always you attribute to the ground. It, to the, it was to uneven. The trainer, like the the players at the end of the day are supposed <laughs> to be there because they're completely malleable at, to some degree by the organization to at least make something that can work. So at the end of the day, it's the organization that is responsible for all of the uh, to the to a pretty big degree to the actions of each player because otherwise they could just replace a player because it's the slot they have full control over so it's at the end of the day the org is the one that should be doing like do we need extra coaching do we need to relook at the way that we're doing whatever the housing do we need to be looking at any specific way that we are being involved here that is causing this team to behave so poorly yeah. uh, i mean the, what, other, the other problem is that sometimes teams just aren't good like they're sent like that it makes sense on paper but it's not good like that happened with tsm last year right like none of those guys are bad players none of those guys didn't want to win they tried hard they had a fine environment maybe song wasn't the best coach whatever but he wasn't so bad that he was going to make that team as they bad get as leads. it was they get leads early right 100 TSM thieves. Last split? no 100 thieves right now they don't right, get like, leads that early they th they've thrown some games uh, they've well, seen that game. They got like, a lead, like kind of at the. What's it called? Rift Herald. That was like ten minutes. I mean, there's the like, game where Sunday got super ahead yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, like the Riven one. Yeah. We yeah, had the Aatrox uh, game too. Uh, Crumbs, you were saying that like it might feel like a slave house if um. That's like you, know, you slave. No, but it, that doesn't even. Uh, uh, you wouldn't even like it, it. wouldn't decrease how much you work there. Absolutely, yeah, it yeah, just means you you sleep somewhere else. Yeah. No. I I like I I'm completely impartial or indifferent to this. I don't really. Think it, uh, think. Ah, uh, the lag. For sure. And they all seem like bros, you know? They're um, happy after they win. It just seems like they're. But I'm saying, look at the age different. of the players. Look at the veteran oh, okay. status of the players as well. I mean, I, these are players that have, like, and personality. I'm not gonna... as well. I'm not going to say that the housing is the problem if the players aren't saying it. Like, to me, this yeah. is such, like, a, a almost like a t secondary or tertiary argument to, like, what 100 Thieves' problems are. I, I have a hard time believing that, like, this team that a lot of people projected to be, like, top four is suddenly last place just because their housing is suboptimal. Oh, or... I think that, uh, Mark, you brought something up on the analyst desk, I think. Uh, it was when... Uh... You know, uh, Aframu was uh, got caught right around mid, uh, mid towards the enemy red buff, and everybody, all this team comes to help him out. And you know, for whatever reason, Aframu reengages. And I thought immediately, like, "Yo, uh, aren't you guys saying to your, like to the entire team, like, I'm trying to get out of here? Please, uh, just disengage, disengage, disengage." Or like, I don't know what the communication going on there. Maybe it's just that. He didn't explain what his intention was right from the beginning. It's just like I'm caught. I want to get out. Maybe like he's just saying like, "Oh, I'm caught," and then his and then his team fucks around with like you know chilling right there, and I then think, eventually he reengages. Like I think we're getting like very into the weeds on this stuff, which yeah, uh, you know we've been yeah, talking okay, about it for a while. Yeah. Okay, so fine. Like I'll finish up right here. When I was saying that, um, okay, everybody is free to hate on Afrim all you want. I know that like a majority of these players are like that are doing all this hate are like low elo. So when you saw um there's a post on reddit yesterday where it was um oh yeah the support is so easy and afro just runs around the base at the end it's just uh, looking for a flank it's just like all right guys he couldn't find the flank like you know he couldn't get in otherwise he just ints uh i think people are being way too critical on him uh i don't think that he's performing well at all but well that's okay so i think like the afro critic sorry to cut you off but i think the afro critical conversation is probably worth a, a separate call uh, no, otherwise, we could spend an hour like... talking about 100T in the start of the show off off this first call. Um, but I hear you when you say that you think that people are being too critical about Aftermo. Yeah, just like, guys, you can't say, oh, just do this, just do this. You know, uh, there's a lot of situations that go into something, uh, a decision before you make it in the game specifically. Not everybody can look at the, situ uh, the game with, you know, perfect eagle eye vision. They can't, you know. Yeah, so whatever. Like, you know, 100 Thieves needs to improve. Uh, you guys can do whatever you want with Aframu. Yeah. And, yep. 
Thanks so much, Keynes, uh, for the call. Any oh. final words? Travis, uh, there was um, the NALCS finals in Toronto uh, two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. And uh, I was in like front row and you were walking up the stairs and I yelled, hey, Travis. And uh, you looked over and waved. And I just wanted to let you know, I'm glad you heard me, buddy. Okay. Thank, thank you. I, <laughs> I try. When people yell my name, even in a weird, random way, I always try to wave back. So I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thank you for bringing me on. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Mark, do we have a separate uh, topic about like the Aphromu criticism? Well, we didn't, but I pulled one. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, we don't we'll need do to. Later. I think we can save that for later on in the show. But a little, little teaser, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, a good idea, right? Just a little. Oof. Uh, you want to go grab the next are... person? Sure. Uh, sorry about the internet issues, guys. I don't know what's. I don't know. Uh, Must the, be the fire. Yeah, I mean, I the, there were our internet went out completely earlier today for a couple hours, which I assume was them like dealing with the repercussions of whatever the power outage fire thing was yesterday. But it's spiking here for maybe three or four seconds at a time. Move back to closer to me, Travis, so you have better internet and you can drive me to pick up food more often again. You can move closer to me. My internet's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Shu is on the show. Tom Shu, where are you calling from? Uh, hey, guys. How you doing? I'm calling from uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia. Well, thank you for being a sub, by the way. Country yeah, roads? No uh, close enough. Tom, I feel like you, get to, you more than anybody I know, try desperately to get on the show every week. Yeah, I got to be able to spit my hot takes because, okay. you know, as a man who's in tune to Reddit's ethos, I think I have a good idea of what they're about. Okay, Look great. Look at that. I'm excited. What uh, What is your hot take tonight? But yeah, this isn't a hot take. But the, I just wanted to talk to um, Crumbs about, um, like, you know, it's been like, what, four months between when you actually left Overwatch League broadcast and actually coming back to League. Like, what have you been doing since then? Like, I'm, I'm checking your Twitter and I see all these, like, different, like, what's it called? Websites, thirdkind.org, gowave.gg, esports agent, framerate.gg. A bunch of this random stuff I've never heard of. Like, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> that's such a weird way to phrase it. What have you been doing? Wait, that's legit, right? Straight to the point. Yeah, yeah I that's like fair. It. I, I just like it's it. a funny, yeah. funny way he's putting it in. Anyway, uh, go ahead, Crumbs. All right, yeah. So all of those things I have not been doing in that time span. I've been doing all of those things for a much longer time, and mm -hmm. for the most part, you know how. Do you remember way back when Monty was saying how it was bringing to light some of the things that were going on with casters and how some casters, essentially, you could not work as a freelancer, right? You would work as a writer or as a freelancer. Uh-huh. So some people, when they work as a freelance shoutcaster, they basically have the option of doing more freelance shoutcasting work. So instead of, saying doing League of Legends, you could do Counter-Strike and you could do Overwatch and do all of those three without all three companies saying anything about it. Like how Shox just it. did announce that she's going to host the CSGO event. Exactly. She's, a, she's freelancer a freelancer now, so she can do that. Instead of doing that, I went and tried to do, try to learn things about how esports works in like a business sense. So I went to try to meet with, you know, went to meetings. What do you call those? Esports seminars before they were over flooded. Before they were over flooded. I feel like they've been over flooded <laughs> since 2014, but. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. That's a while ago. That's how yeah. far back. I'm. Um, and so in those seminars, I met a bunch of people and third or go wave used to be it was um or is rather it's an agency it's a management company for professional players that it was launched like two and a half years ago i'm still doing that right but not in a management sense and it's just in a different way because i had to go to korea so i couldn't actually perform that job so more of like hey i'm working on this i can assist with other aspects of it and frame rate was a company that initially tried to do educational content for esports and uh -huh. then it switched over into just doing media travis knows about it as well yeah i did some work you, you, uh, with them as well we did a couple of videos yeah so they they make content they produce content um i went with them to the university becker becker college rather in 
Boston, and we launched a program that ended up, or rather made a video that helped bring awareness to the esports program for their university that got, I think, 100 requests in the, like, the first hour and just was the largest and first business or one of the esports programs. I don't remember the name, so I'm not going to quote it. All right. So just been doing that kind of stuff and... Yeah, that, that's what I've been doing, really, instead of shoutcasting different games and doing that, going that route, I've been trying to learn about how esports works in the back end of things as to, like, what business interests look like and how does esports currently, like, where does it stand? Like, who's trying so, to do what? And So it's yeah. more like looking for a career once you, you know, you stop being in front of the camera. Why not both? I mean, are you ever going to stop being, which one do you think is going to happen first? Are you going to stop being in front of the camera or? I don't know. I've never actually set the like, all right, what's the end goal of this? I've just kind of be like, okay, I'm doing yeah, this kinda, now. So I mean, this is day time. everything I mean, this brought is me something... back to League of Legends again. So it seems like this one is. Tom, this is something that a lot of people don't know is that for a lot of us that are on camera, we're doing stuff behind the scenes uh, that is, is not necessarily on camera like mark does a bunch of stuff with offline i think he he works not just on the content side for them behind the camera but also uh, mark i think you help with some of the business stuff right correct yes and so similarly and i have done stuff behind the scenes uh some consulting and that kind of thing that is not necessarily related to my content stuff so i think that's what crumbs does too right is that he's got a lot of knowledge about the space he's been in it forever so he can go out and actually advise different companies or help them out or do consulting or any of these different things because and, and quite frankly i think a lot of us like to do that because it's fun to be on on camera but when you've been doing it for years and years and years it's kind of nice to also be able to try something else Jeez, what do you mean you guys oh, don't yeah. actually just work full-time as actors it's like <laughs> it's like seeing my it's like seeing my teacher at the supermarket like you are you have a life outside of school like well we do, none of us have lives outside of esports but uh oh god i wish i was like <laughs> Yeah, I... uh, too true. Uh, but yeah. uh, I do have a, a follow-up question to that. Uh, more regarding your time uh, with um, being behind the Overwatch casters desks. Um, I remember, I think you said something in an interview about your time I took a... uh, working with um, Activision Blizzard. And I think you mentioned something about, like, I don't know. It's like you can say specific things that are like different kinds of things that you can say with, like, the Riot Games but you can't say with Activision Blizzard running things in Overwatch League. Can you like comment a little more about that? Or because we've sort of seen it with how you know Activision has been kind of like scrubbing the Overwatch League clean, removing a lot of like uh, different questionable content and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah. So I think the first you have to understand how the league is set up. I think in the first place, which is that it's a new league with a lot of new investors. And a lot of new investors that essentially bought the league. Uh -huh. I think that's why the news were made of all these big teams buying all this money for, okay, they're going into the Overwatch League and now they have, I don't know, like a total buy in of like $400 million with like a huge company behind you. And because the money was initially put forth by the teams, essentially Blizzard does not have to put forth so much of their own money. Therefore, the league belongs to a big part of it, to the teams, profit sharing, right? Like that was part of, that's part of Excel too. And so by having that, I, as a commentator or analyst, if I say something, there is a larger power that can say, we don't want you to say that. Gotcha. So Tom, it's, a, it's a lot like NFL. Tom, thank you. Some, oh, he was just saying it's a lot like the NFL. Oh, I guess. I don't know how they do it. Tom, thank you so much for your call. Is there anything you want to say here at the end? Uh, yeah, I just want a short 100 Thieves take. Honestly, I don't think the whole thing is Aphromoo's fault because, honestly, the way this team was put together, it was just designed to fail. Uh, like, someday and Bang uh, really have bad communication issues. And if you look at Anda, it's really quiet. Just look at it. He's cousin of Ball, so of course he's going to be real quiet. And so now his job is, Afro's job is to call up these complex macro plays, but now he has to get across the communication barrier. And if he had kept to do that with talking with two Koreans and who are you trying to translate and everything is going to get pulled up. So, take. so they're going to do bad in the first place and they're never going to work out. So you might as well just go ahead and change thank, everything around. Thank you, Tom. That's a good hot take. <laughs> you uh, rushed yeah. it out there. Thanks, Tom. Have a good one. You too. Have a great one.
Okay. What was that last part? I fell asleep. <laughs> he was he was rushing out his hundred his hundred T hot take before we uh, we moved on to the next caller. Um, speaking of the next caller, maybe you can go grab him. Uh, shout out to Luna Bubble Tuna. Will, well, shout out to Alienware. Thank you. Uh, Will Tab, Zest God 22, Queen Emus, uh, Luna Bumblebee Tuna for 15 months, Protozoa 69, the out, Meow Scenario 351, Rainbow Keys, Geek Out, the Pack 69, Brooksy 32, Dan Psych. Oh my God, so many people. The Salt Capped. We'll get to more in a second. What's up, Mark? Am I, am I pulling someone or are we yeah. doing the. No, you, you can pull somebody. We'll do it after this next call. We started a little late, so we're still good. Uh, the salt capped Hollow Ooh. Moon, who just oh, hit 12 shit. months, Caruse 44, and Nanuko 111. We'll get the rest of the subs read in just a little bit. Wait, Wait Travis, calling. so after having this many callers, could you identify like a sort of archetype of a typical caller? Um, you, Ed, you have some people who come on the show and I think they want to sound super smart, and so they spend a lot of time trying to provide their like deep analysis and then you've got certain people who are just here for the hot take and to try to get twitch to react and everything in between so it's just it's a different different type of thing but yeah you get different types of callers on the show speaking of different types of callers na alistar is on the show na alistar where are you calling from hello i am calling from fort worth texas fort worth texas okay is that is that how close to austin is that that is actually a part of the uh dallas metroplex it's the it's the west side of DFW. Yeah, I've been to Fort Worth before. I just actually don't know how long it gets. Oh, it's about, about five hours. Okay. So you're going to drive over there in a couple days to see me in Austin, right? Unfortunately not. All right, whatever. What's your call? Um, <laughs> so uh, my call was TL is going to finish out the regular season uh, the next two weeks undefeated, win playoffs, and make MSI finals. Okay. Well... That's a lot of predictions all at once. Uh, first off, thank you for being a sub. All right. Sure. Uh, why do you think that's the case? Um, honestly, I just think that all of our players are awesome. Um, we've got Impact, Xmithy, Jensen, Doublelift, and Core JJ, who are all shown and proven uh, veteran players who are just really, really good. Um, they've shown a variety of champions um, that they're proficient on, and I think that they really know how to turn it on uh, come playoffs, so they'll be able to take playoffs. Um, I think that their loss to TSM, I don't think they'll repeat it. Sure, but why? Like, how, how do you get from they're really good to they're going to make MSI finals? Come on, man. Just well, say they're going to win the whole thing if you're going to say it's finals. Just no, make it really hot. Make it a really hot yeah, yeah. take. I don't, I don't this know. This is if a reasonable gonna... <laughs> take, Crumbs. I don't know if they're gonna take down Griffin, honestly. Um, okay. So I have, I have to kind of draw the line there. But uh... so you think? So really, this take is they are better than every team in the world except for Griffin, <laughs> or maybe some of the other Korean teams, I guess. Because you think that they are they're capable of beating any other top team and from any region. I I think they could possibly even beat Griffin. <laughs> I don't think that's the most likely scenario though. Okay, okay. Hang you, would, the phone. <laughs> you would not bet. You would not bet on them beating Griffin. I think that's very conservative of you. Conservative of you. It's nice to see some restraint. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what, what's your conservative take? Like, let's say, you know, some issues arise and our quiz go. What do you think, like, the, the – the, so that's the ceiling, right? They're going to the finals and they're going right. to lose Griffin. What's, what's your floor for, for TL? So I could see their next couple of games. Um, I think they're playing, like, Echo Fox, Clutch Gaming. TSM. Um, I know they're playing TSM as the last game of the, the regular split. Um, that game, I, I think that if they're going to lose another game, that would be the game that they would lose. The game against TSM. Well, yes. Uh, I think most people would agree with that. Okay. Right. How, like, how much do you watch the other regions? How much do you watch the other regions? Um, I don't. I don't honestly get around to watching the other regions much. Okay, so, so you're how saying do you know that they they're can beat Europe? All the other teams. Because he watches watch NA the best region. Yeah, obviously. 
Um, I don't. I don't know. I'm hearing about how G2 um, is kind of <laughs> game now. You know, they're like uh, being being wacko over there with their crazy team comps. Um, <laughs> China, oh, it's too good. China. Um, I know Sandbox and Damn One and and Invictus Gaming are all up there at the top. Um, I think Sandbox is Korean. San- is Sandbox oh, really Korean? Well, let's top wait, sports, let's get... top sports. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. No, I'm just... Let's... Okay, so you're very confident in TL. I'm very and... confident in TL, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, that we've... Okay. So... Oh, man. So, yeah, welcome to Hotline League, Crumbs. Um, this is like no other show on the planet. Um, so, Crumbs or Mark, which one of you guys wants to jump in here and raise some counter-arguments... To the concept that... No, keep going. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It's one of those situations, Travic, where it's, it's it's like you can't apply logic to an illogical thing. You know? Okay, well, but let's let's put this... Okay, let's, t- let's we'll take it step by step. One, do you guys think that TL will go undefeated through the next four games, not lose to TSM, and win spring finals? That's not that unrealistic. Yeah, I no, don't I think, think that's unrealistic. I think they're likely to. I think they're more likely to drop a random game left in the regular season than lose and not make finals. I think they're, I think they're they almost can, a lock for, for winning finals. If they have, oh yeah, for and N- L- LCS rather than not MSI, but for MSI they can make it to MSI if they have an easy bracket. That's really it. Every all the good teams on one side, TL gets all the easy ones, make it to semis. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, you're saying at MSI they could do this? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just mean, but but so it sounds like you guys are in agreement that. TL is very likely to go to MSI. Yep. Okay. So then once they get to MSI, uh, how do you guys feel they have, uh, what are their chances against some of the other teams? I would say they're probably, without, you know, knowing for sure how G2 shakes up. I anticipate G2's like, "Quote unquote problems right now is just like they're so good that they're getting bored or something, and they they're like all really aggressive players. Like Caps is crazy, Perks is crazy, Wonder's crazy. So like they're they're the kind of team like when they get bored they start doing dumb shit. I think of the major regions, not including Vietnam, and a uh, team like probably is the longest shot to to making or winning finals. So." The ESPN Power Rankings have TL over G2 Esports by one. So there's an opinion that, at least in the ESPN Power Rankings, that, T- that TL is better than G2, which is the likely candidate to make it to MSI's Europe. Uh, I don't think, like, it's so cut and dry that, like, I'm like, well, Team Liquid's just going to get shit on by G2. But I, I do think G2 is better for me personally. Okay. Well, I think a lot of it also is the meta and the way that you play the game. It's you get your advantage, and then if you know how to close out with the right champions, if you can do it well, you should be able to be able to execute on that. I think it definitely does favor G two, but I'm concerned about like top side matchup because uh, I don't think Team Liquid really has the advantage anywhere other than support with Core JJ. Uh, and as much as I love Core JJ. I don't think. I mean, maybe double lift over perks. I mean, yeah, sure. I guess yeah. bot lane they have the advantage, yeah. but uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, the, the bot lane is, is an advantage, but I, with how bot lane I feel like isn't like the most important lane to smash. I'm, I'm much more concerned about top lane and wonder. I think jungle's pretty close, and I think mid lane is probably in their favor. Uh, it'll have to do so much with the way that they play over here. Like it's just a clash completely. Of yeah. regions in the way that they play as well. So, I mean, we can theorize how it'll go, but it almost always comes down to like, oh shit, it happened. It happened again. It was because it's, let's say you have the classic early game versus late game. Like, oh, if they smash them early, mm-hmm. they'll crush them every time. But if they hold out, they will somehow win late because they apparently maybe have better decision making. So, those international clashes with metas the way they are now are always so volatile. Okay, yeah. NA All Star. So it sounds like the verdict is this: there's not mm-hmm. too much disagreement under the idea that it's likely that TL will win spring, right? Uh, but 
your MSI analysis is maybe a little eager and dare I say, maybe a little uninformed given your lack of knowledge of the other regions. I'll, I'll concede that. Okay. Well, is there anything that you would like to say here at the end? <laughs> um, well, I think, I think that Team Liquid has shown that they just have – you can't really ban anybody out, and they're all top-tier players, and um, their, their mid-game seems like it's super solid, and they're okay. able to learn from mistakes and stuff. Okay, so. yeah. as, a, as a souvenir from this show, go to YouTube and just watch SKT versus Griffin – the whole three games. That's it. Only watch that, I'm, and then think, could, on it. could, yeah, I'm could on it. T? How would TL do this? How would TL play against? Just be like, okay, TL, go. Let, what what do you got? And then that's all. That's all. They got a here's, lot of veterans. Crumbs. All right. Here's another thing for you about why Team Liquid's mid game looks so good in North America, and like everyone, get ready to clip this and post this. Not vote brigading, just saying like the world needs to know in case they missed it from the countdown where we did a little joke called the Fiesta Zone. North America, when oh, they yeah. get first blood, loses more often than they win. They win 46% of the time with first blood. And with a lead, they are 20% lower. If they have a gold lead at 15, they win, I think it was 62% of the time. And the it was rest lower. of the it world. Was 54. It was 54 for us. Was it that bad? And the rest yeah. of the world was like 75. Or like 81. It's like we are so fucking bad in the mid and late game that Team Liquid, being good, will crush everyone in the mid to late game. Okay. So what okay. you're saying is, this is actually great news for us because it's very likely that we will get behind international in, in a match internationally and that if we are behind, it's actually when we're at our best because that's our highest chances of winning. Here's a super hot take. What if turns out that both Cloud9 and TL have just sucked out everything out of the NLCS? Put TSM in there just to make it even better. Those three have just sucked out all the energy of the other ones, and this is a year that they'll perform internationally because they've drained all the other teams so much they just <laughs> use it as a playground to just. I mean, I don't think they've drained really other good. teams. I think they've drained other regions of some other talent, and that's what. We got Cold uh, JJ here, you know. Would you take bustering out as early as possible for the next five years if North America won MSI? Hell no, not MSI. There's only one not MSI. It's worlds. It's got to be worlds. It's yeah. got to be worlds. Okay. People I mean, if you said worlds, MSI. then of course we're we're gonna say yes. Yeah, if it's yeah absolutely. So I, I had to try something. Literally, else. till till I, till I die or till League of Legends dies, if it ever dies. Yes, I'll take one NA victory. <laughs> NA the region implodes. We all lose our jobs, but we went That's out with one W. One, just give me that. NA All Star, any uh, shouts or anything here at the end? Uh, no, thanks for thanks for doing the show. I've been a longtime fan um, of both y'all, or all three of you, um, Crumbs, <laughs> you included. Thanks, man. So, um, yeah, thanks thanks for having me on, um, and y'all take care. Well, we'll we'll be sure to uh, clip this out for YouTube whenever. TL makes finals and shows an incredible, compelling match against Griffin. Yeah, that'll be my that'll be my day of glory. Yeah. maybe. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. All right. Uh, before we move on to the next caller, it's time for a quick break so that we can pay the bills, so that Mark Z can actually uh, feed the cat. So we don't get our cat food sponsorship or anything like that. It's time for a quick shout out to Alienware. So for those of you that don't know, I talked about this a little bit uh, today in a video, uh, but I will actually be in Austin this week. I don't know what Mark's doing. Uh, oh, there's the cat. Anyway, just understand that if you're listening to this video and you're listening to this ad right now, you're supporting that cat that's on Mark's screen. Anyway, I'm going to be in Austin this week, South by Southwest. If you are there, go to the Alienware Outpost, uh, South by Southwest Gaming. Go to the Alienware Outpost, hang out. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff. I know TL's bringing some people. They're doing some stuff with Red Bull. They're doing uh, all the stuff. Alienware's doing some stuff with Red Bull. And there's a bunch of cool stuff happening there. It's, it's piping hot. There's going to be some great stuff happening. And I uh, would love to see you there. Other than that, go check out dell.com slash Travis. Uh, that's my link. They support all the stuff that I do. Playmakers, which is coming out uh, this week. The first episode just dropped. Uh, that's a, a show that like costs a lot to make. 
we probably weren't going to do a second season unless we had like a sponsor that could support it. And they came in and supported that as part of the package. They really like the that content. So it's nice that they're able to help make that stuff possible. They make this show possible. Thank you so much to Alienware for, for your assistance. We got 4K interviews at the LCS now because of the a computer they were able to hook us up for our editor. Uh, incredible stuff happening over there. So thank you so much to Alienware for sponsoring this. I will see some of you hopefully in Austin at South by Southwest. Alienware Outpost. Check it out. Thanks so much, Alienware. Are you just poking your cat? <laughs> it just popped up. <laughs> All right. On to the next caller. Marx goes off to grab him. Uh, shout out a couple of subs here. Uh, CCR17, Ladder Slider, Big Angry Hobo, Nanuko111, 1997, uh, Vasilem, The Real Maliac, Haruz44. I think I shouted some of this out before. Uh, the Zrady, uh, no, no, no EP, uh, Jdeck, Pokemon 383, and Project Cream Pie, who just made it 12 months in a row, asked Crumbs how he stayed awake casting Overwatch League Kappa. Well, we don't know if he did. Clearly he's over yeah. here now, so. Uh, Jaden Favis. Someone noticed I was, I was out. <laughs> Jaden Favis. Is that how you pronounce your name? It is Jaden Favis. Jaden Favis. Okay, I was close. Yeah, yeah. Jaden Favis. I'm just going to call you Jaden. Can we go with the first name basis? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, we're tight okay. like that. Thank God. All right. Uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Camarillo, California. Camarillo, California. I actually don't know where that is. Is that like Central California? It's not in Southern yeah, California. It's Southern right? California. It's like an it hour is? drive from LA, and it's like 40 minutes away from Ventura. So oh, okay. Close. You're like up there. Okay. Sorry for not knowing. I, I didn't realize that there were areas within an hour that I, I was unaware of. Uh, oh, yeah. What do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Well, you know, I've been uh, getting a little tired of uh, hearing how much people sleep on Optic. It's like no one even cares that they exist, honestly. Like no one talks about them on the dive. I mean, on the analyst desk, hardly. But uh, I personally believe that Optic will finish the regular season in fourth place or higher and will make playoffs and have a decent shot at making it to spring finals. But, you know, that might be a little too optimistic. So I say they make it to semis okay. because Crown has uh, the potential to be the best mid laner. Because Crown has the potential to be the best mid laner? Yeah, I think Crown, when, uh, you know, when uh, all the cards are on the table, Crown can be the best mid, is what I'm saying. Well, well, I would point out to you that unfortunately there are five different roles. So even if he's the best what, mid laner. He is the best mid laner, and I believe he can carry it. Hold on, hold on. Have you seen. Optics scheduler right now. Yeah, I seen it. So you think they're gonna take down what Cloud Nine? Mm, I think potentially they can. They but if they can capitalize on their good early games because they have very strong early games. Even against Team Liquid, they actually played well. If they just learn how to play together and actually like you know capitalize on so a strong early here, game. Here's like the games. Optic versus Golden Gardens, and I would argue that one of Optics. Um, it can be a bit of a struggle for them is their bottom lane. Yeah. And I would argue the same thing for Golden Guardians. It's a bit of a struggle down there. But in that case, I would take Golden Guardians' is whatever is working for their mid and top side with the jungle any day over Optics. Optics keeps switching it out. And yes, while Crown is amazing, you got to work in unison. It doesn't matter if your mid lane's a god, if he always needs the jungler cohesion in the top lane in order to, and his lanes in order to push out. I love what Frog has been doing right now, but I think in a large part, it's due to the synergy he has with this jungler. Corky works because Crown can pretty much play by himself. Like if you watch how they play, it often mm. depends on just scaling a little bit and then working individually every once in a while. It, it seems like there's a bit of a struggle with team play. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that, but I think that's all going to... It all can be resolved potentially. Like, I, I don't know. I, I look at this team and I see so much that, that could work. Because, I mean, he has Dardog and Meteos to complement him, and that they seem to be working pretty well together. He seems like he can switch them in and out and work just the same. But if but, we're going to start judging teams based off of what how they should work and what their potential is, 100 Thieves is probably going to win the split. Wait, what was the stat no, no, no. you gave? We found out, you found out, Mark, the jungle proximity of oh. uh, of the jungler in the optic matchup. So it was... It was zero. Right, zero... <laughs> Dardock literally went top zero time. Well, that's and good. Yeah. One lane, he has, he's got zero. Dogo top, so, you know, not much can be done there. Dude, yeah, yeah I, okay, you're the one that's backing up the team, though, right? 
Look, they're not going to play through talking top. to the team you're trying to back up? Uh, no, I'm just talking bad about uh, Doku. I think we can, uh, you know, <laughs> we can all kind of. He's part of the team. That's yeah, true. Oh, if you're going to give props. My if you're hand's like, fine, but my thumb's broken. <laughs> if, if you're going to give props to Crown for being in mid lane and you think he has the potential to be the best mid laner, but then you're also saying Doku's not great, then <laughs> you're kind of canceling out your promotion here. No, no, I think Crown can take the team higher than Doqua can drag it down. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Have you ever played solo queue? That disproves it. Hey, what are you talking about, dude? I, I carry games left and right, you know? What if someone basically is AFK? Could you, like, AFK, you've realized is better than one guy feeding. Exactly. Okay, so here, I'm just going to... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to take us through uh, Optics matches. I'm going to get Mark and Crumbs. Crumbs and Mark, will they beat CLG? Quite possibly. Uh, maybe. Yeah, pretty good matchup. Okay. Uh, will they beat Cloud9? No. Will they beat no, no. Golden Guardians? It could happen, but it think... looks it's favored to Golden Guardians. Agree. Will they beat 100T? 100T. That's a game you don't want to miss. It's the you last match. It's it. the last match of the split, so there will be zero pressure on 100T. I would argue that that is the moment we're going to see 100T look the way that everyone expected you them to look. You clearly have sport. not suffered sad stories, Travis, because sad stories just get even sadder. There's no way. I mean, <laughs> I I th- I mean my argument, and I don't want to turn this into a 100T thing, but I feel like 100T, like the moment they stop, people think that they're giving, that they aren't giving a shit right now. I actually think that the moment that they have no pressure on them is the moment they're going to just destroy everyone. Um, so, uh, it could happen. Yeah. I'll you... say for for Optic, I think they can like keep all inning on this early game bullshit. Like Arrow can play Callista, Arrow can play Draven. Uh, you ha- no, maybe some Lucian bans he pulls. Like he just plays early game stuff. I don't think Big is great mechanically. I think sometimes he looks like completely lost on on some champs. But uh, and like I think that like the Bali has some problems like when they got that first blood with the Callista Braum lane and like big just started walking away from a kill kill and like had to like flash back in and kind of react to like arrow going in like I think there are some synergy problems there but I think they can be good enough to do well against the Bali like Golden Guardians or something uh and CLG's Bali has looked suspect so I think Optic can make playoffs and maybe if they have a really good draw for whoever like the fourth team is because i don't think they'll get top four but i don't think top like the fourth best team will be great so if it's FlyQuest or golden guardians maybe they can beat them and make semis so you think you think optics gonna be able to overtake those two no i'm saying like optic can squeak in at like six or fifth and draw they get it super yeah if FlyQuest takes over tsm kind of thing yeah, or, or like they come in, uh, like if they get fifth somehow, like if Golden Guardians drops, or like goes up and FlyQuest drops, and FlyQuest ends up sixth and they end up fifth. Like, okay. I can see a world where it happens, but I, I definitely don't think it's likely. I don't, I wouldn't bet on it. I would mm. not put any money on that. No uh. stocks will be purchased. Okay, I, I'm hearing you right. I'm hearing you. And it makes sense, you know, to be doubtful, to be doubtful. You know, sometimes you just <laughs> got to... confusing me with the facts, you know, Mark. Look at... No, no, no. People have always countered out Crown in a lot of different times. I mean, I get yeah, he was on a better team, you know, SSG before. But just looking at when he was not favored at all, he won 2016 regionals, taking down KT and AFS. He won 2017 regionals, taking down uh, also KT if, and if, AFS. If all we're doing is talking about how wait, Crown has wait, had success on, in the past. Do you know, what, where, do you know, where, where, do you know that Crown has also played outside of Korea before? I haven't followed him for that long. Oh, he, was in huh. Brazil. he went to Brazil. Yeah. So this man has experience going to a minor region how, and having to not succeed. How clutch yeah, exactly. was Crown? So at, he's going to use. That. Yeah. <laughs> how clutch was Crown at Worlds people. last year? At Worlds last year, he wasn't. But that's not the same thing. It's the most he, recent <laughs> time. But also in the most recent time, he took down Griffin and Kingzone with his team. Not like it was just him. But I'm saying he has, you know. That One man can't carry. carry though right now. That's the problem. Like you're not in the world. Like yeah. they've changed the game consistently to make it so that it was more and more like a team. And now you've reached like the highest point of team play. Like if you're really not playing as a team, you're fucked. So it doesn't matter if how good Crown is. He's not making up for the fact hey, that he can't one v two at every level. He's also got Dardock and Medios. 
and big, you know, might be a little bit troll, a bit of a troll for it sometimes, but big can play very well. I mean, I think they have the tools necessary to, at the very least, make it to semis in, in playoffs. The problem is I feel like there you can make that argument for okay. a lot of teams that they have the tools to make it to playoffs or semis or whatever. Like, you yeah, can say well, the same I mean, thing about Golden Guardians. You can say the same thing about CLG. You can say the same thing about FlyQuest. Like, I think there's a lot of teams you can say that about. Have you ever played FIFA or, the or like, uh, sports games? Yeah, bad. You know how when you choose a team, it's always, like, the speed, the power, et cetera, and they always have one category that's synergy? Yeah. And it seems like almost all the time, like, the category that makes a huge difference is the synergy part. And that's the part, like, if I were to optic, yeah, I'd give him a great on pretty much most categories. But when it came to that synergy bar, I wouldn't give him a whole lot. And that's the thing that's holding them back. And it seems like the players that they have are mixed with a certain kind of, I, don't, I wouldn't want to say barrier, but it seems like it might take a little bit longer for this team than for most teams to get past that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, you know, things are always a little different in a best of five, as, uh, as at least what I would say. Because right now, look at who's the four teams below them and the two teams above them. I personally think they can beat all of those teams pretty handedly in a best of five. I... I'm sure they kick ass and scrims. I just, I feel oh, like... yeah, they scrim gods. You can make the same argument. Like, those other teams could handle Optic handily in a best of five as well. Well, I would disagree with that, but that's because I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, at least, at least <laughs> we've, we've found the root of the issue. Uh, is there any shout-outs, plugs, or anything you want to say here as we say goodbye? Hmm. You know what? Yeah, I was wondering if you could unban me from your chat. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, what did you yes, do to get banned yes. from the chat? Uh, actually, I do. I remember exactly what it was. You had uh, an e-girl streamer on, and I said, uh, is she only popular because she's a girl? And then you were like, we need to get assholes like that out of the chat. Mods banned that guy, and then I was banned. Okay. Are you going to say something like that again in the future? Hmm. Uh, you know what? For you, Travis... I think I can hold off, you know. Okay. I, I've, all, I've got five banned accounts, but I'm reforming. Man, that, Jesus. <laughs> that hesitation really convincing. The hesitation that, followed by I've got five banned accounts. Do it, do it. Uh, they're league accounts, though, so it's different. Uh, what is your... I, that doesn't make me feel more confident. Uh, what is your Twitch handle? Uh, Favis, just my last name. Okay. I will unban you, uh, but be on your best behavior. This is, you're on right, yeah. probation or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I thanks so it, much yeah. for calling in. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. These callers are hilarious. Yeah, no, I mean, Hotline League is, it's like, as I said, it's like no other show. You know, Crumbs, or sorry, the, like Crumbs, if you go on the dive, they're like, oh, where's the dive? And everything's so clean and it's so uh, sterile. It's like going into a hospital, you know? Is that why you have it red so that it looks more like a red light district? Well, this, no, no, no. Prostitution is not the theme of this show, Crumbs. Uh -huh. Thank you, though. Uh, no, the, the theme is like late night radio show. <laughs> right, because that's where you go in the late night to the red light, right? <sighs> Isn't that why? <laughs> Brooksy, Brooksy, where are you calling from? Athens, Georgia, home of the Bulldogs. Well, thanks for calling it. Have you been on the show before? I feel like you have been. No, uh, just a long-time sub. Oh, well, thank you for being a long-time sub. Uh, maybe we've had somebody else from Athens, Georgia on. I feel like I'm... Sounds familiar. What What do you want to talk about on the show tonight? So, I wanted to say uh, that CLG is still going to make playoffs um, if they figure out how to correctly draft around their players and their player strengths. Okay, so now we've got we've got another person saying making predictions around mid tier team locking in playoffs. Uh, so okay, so let's see what your argument ends up being. Why is CLG able to do this? So I understood what the last guy was saying, but I also think that um, Power of Evil and all the rest of the mid tier uh, mid laners are probably about the same. And it's not going to be, I don't think that Crown is going to be able to carry them. Um, I think that CLG also has a relatively easy schedule besides the TSM game for the next four games. And so it's definitely feasible for them to, them to go 3 1 in the next couple of weeks. Mm. 
I think that Irene drafting around their players is going to be a big part of it. Um, never picking Aatrox again for Darshan is going to be a big thing. Okay, so you think it's the it's is how much of it is the schedule that will allow them to make it? How did you know Irene was the one doing the drafting? Okay, I thought about that. So maybe maybe Darshan is saying that he wants to, he wants Aatrox, or maybe the team is like, oh yeah, Aatrox is a good pick here or whatever. But I think somebody should shut that down real quick. And whether it's Irene because he's the coach or the team because it's not being successful, but. I think that for Travis, your question, it's like 70% their schedule. Uh, they play... I think Echo it's Fox, Optic. 100 Thieves, Optic, or no, Optic, and TSM. Yeah, and so I think that they can definitely win all three of those games besides the TSM game. Yeah. I mean, we oh. just a second ago said that Optic was favored in the CLG match. Yeah, but you guys are wrong. Okay, though. well... Well, it, to be fair, it wasn't like also like 70 30 optic. That's, that's, pretty that's a coin flip right there. That's okay. a yeah, oh, yeah, that solo queue game. I still think, I think so. Cool. What's weird with CLG is I don't know what the fuck they're doing with their roster. Because I'm surprised you talk about draft as the first thing. I'm wondering what they're doing with this, this goddamn roster because they were 0 2 uh, or 0 4 coming into this week. But one week was against. Uh, they, they lost to TL, and then they lost to Golden Guardians, and then they lost to Clutch. And, like, the Clutch loss is bad, for sure. And, obviously, mm -hmm. Golden Guardians is pretty bad. But, like, I have to think that this, like, the loss to Golden Guardians and to Clutch were because of this new roster. Like, I can't believe they did that. Whereas, like, they had lost to TSM, C9, TL in that four-game loss streak. And, the, and then they beat FlyQuest with their, with their, with their roster before they swapped it. Like... I don't understand why they would make this swap as their schedule was getting easier and when they need to be making the playoff push. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people are asking. I'm very curious if CLG's addressed this, and I, I admittedly haven't caught it. I know Nick Allen's in the chat because somebody accidentally gave out random subs Ooh, in one I of them. I saw that to too. Him. I saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, it's interesting. I'm curious what, if that was like a Weldon special or if it so was something I, with the whole thing. I got Okay. I, just, I keep saying hot takes. Um, they win with Darshan, right? Right before they sub the players up, correct? I think they play one or maybe two more games. Maybe one, maybe just one more. Yeah, Three they won with games. Darshan on Jax and yeah. they lost they the have, They won with Darshan on Jax and then they swap out bottom and the jungle. What mm. if after they're like, oh, us, and they pick Ezreal all the time. So because they're always relying, okay, just let... Let the let stick say carry late game. Let him kind of be his own man doing his Ezreal thing because we're not maybe not working very well in unison. Then they keep trying out top lane. They might be split, right? It's a bit of a it's different. It's difficult to be like okay now we're revolving around top lane because we found a win there. Even though most teams don't do that now, so I think that might be that might right. Be so because some. they won with Darshan, they wanted to play around him more. Yeah. But I mean, if you watch the academy games, you'll see that the academy team plays around uh, auto a lot. Oh, I'm not saying, dude, it's counter logic gaming. Are yeah, you me? just coming up with anything <laughs> is difficult enough. And like to be fair, Biofrost and Six Eight were struggling a lot in that loss streak. Like they got destroyed by TSM spot lane with like the hooks and stuff. Um, but I just can't. I mean, like, I like Auto too. I don't think Auto is like terrible. I'm just surprised that they right thought that because this it, was the time. you felt they were in a pretty good position. They were in the playoff realm whenever they went into this weekend, and then they lost the two games, and now they're out. They're down, tied for a seventh. So it's kind of like right. Oh, this feels like you were in a good a week place nine before. move or something. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think that it was probably to. A little bit of lighting a fire under uh, Stixay's ass, and um, a little bit of giving Otto his shot since he was popping off in in Academy. Um, I think that I think that it definitely could have been successful. There were just a lot of things that that happened um, elsewhere that caused it. So if you look at like the the clutch game, they were losing topside hard, and then. Um, they couldn't figure out how to how to team fight and 
Um, okay. Couldn't couldn't take it late enough. And what about like this? Though? What about this? They're trying new players. They brought in kind of a, like if you were to look at the LCS, the player rosters, you'd say the players at CLG got aren't necessarily the highest profile players, right? They wouldn't be the most expensive of all players, right? I think that mm-hmm. you want to say that. Look at yeah. it in the grand scheme of things. Is every single year a year to try to like, shoot for the top? Or should every year be kind of like a, a gradual buildup of like, okay, we're going to slowly start getting there? Or is like, is the time frame to reach like the greatness of the team just one split at a time? Like, is that really how much I mean, time I, they have? Like, can I an organization think... choose to take more time than that? I think they spent a lot of time last year trying to get better. I don't think they should try it. They should be experimenting this year. I think they need to get to playoffs. Otherwise, their dwindling fan base is going to abandon them. I also think, like... But you don't need... But hang on. What's the correlation between winning and... What's the correlation between uh, winning and a fan base? I can tell you. It's very it little. TSM. It's a team that did not win, and we got fandom. There's no correlation. I, I would say there's a pretty big correlation. <laughs> there is the biggest correlation between. We didn't win anything. It was Renegades, and people were chanting Renegades over TSM. You guys, okay. I do not think that you Renegades guys had a, had a bigger fan base than TSM. From previously successful days. You had Alex Ish yourself. Like you had a lot of people. But we had, had no wins. Already liked. Because he already won in the past. Like. No one gives a fuck about... I mean, I love Otto, so I hope he doesn't take this the wrong way, but no one gives a fuck about <laughs> Otto or Wiggly or any of these guys because they, they haven't done anything in the scene yet. No one, no one has a reason to care. Whereas, like, at least with Renegades, you guys all were accomplished previously, even if you're the current version of you guys were not good. So I like, also don't... I can't imagine a world where there were more Renegades fans than TSM fans. I didn't say that. I know, I'm just... I'm. Like, yes, there were times where people were chanting. You said, <laughs> neither. You said they were chanting Renegades over TSM. Yeah, that's which just is like a fun. Even bandanas, and so it's like, oh, free bandanas, you might as well chant. Okay, well, that's true. I'm just <laughs> saying, I don't think that that is evidence that you guys were able, like, that there's not as much of a correlation between winning. And I think TSM's fan base, for instance, was built off of winning. And now that they're not. Uh, I mean, now they're starting to, but I think they lost a lot of fans because they stopped delivering wins. I also think it's the kind of thing where, like, Renegades and some of these lower tier teams that, like, have fans, like, that might be true for a split or two, but, like, if you lost and had been losing for over a year, people start getting fed up, I think. So, like, I don't think Renegades was long, like, around long enough to feel that, but, like, CLG was a bit of a dumpster fire last year. And things- I, th- I think so as well, but what I'm getting at is like, what if there's another deliverable you can give to fans that makes up for winning? Is there, is there that, right? Could it Can content override winning? Like that's really the question. I mean, those things help, but they're not gonna, I think we're getting off topic now, but I think those things help, but it doesn't, that's not, it's not gonna I do. think I- given that, given that this year feels pretty open outside the top three, like, why not make a playoff push? Like, Otto's been developing under CLG for like three years. They they kind of know who this guy is at this point. Right? Like, it seems weird to... I don't know. Regardless, I think they have a chance at playoffs. I think that they should put in their best roster and stop fucking around. If you think Otto's the answer, then leave Otto in. I don't care, but like, I hope they don't flip-flop week eight and week nine again and... Yes, like you said, caller, please figure out their draft. I think if they had won last weekend, even one of the games, then we wouldn't even be talking about uh, whether Otto was a fine fine placement in there. Um, but I also think that adding on to that, I don't think that Otto was the reason that they lost. Well, he played pretty bad. Yeah, but I think that, I mean, they had a losing in both games, I think. So he was versus he was Ezreal Draven in the Golden Guardians game, and then Ash into Aurelia. Oh, I don't care about his laning phase. Don't confuse me with the facts, Mark. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't care about his laning phase. Look at like his skill shot accuracy and positioning, and like taking the Rise Realm Warp in, and, like those kinds of things. Like those are probably team coordination things, but that's more to the point of like you're switching your roster out. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brooksy, any final thoughts? Um. I think I'm. I think I'm good. Uh, CLG till I die. So, 
Oh, that's sweet. Get a, get a tattoo. Get a tattoo. Prove it. Uh, so me and my friends have been talking about it. And we, let, last year we said if they make playoffs, uh, we were gonna get it. And then we made the same pack this year. So don't. We'll see how that don't one goes. Don't get a CLG tattoo. It's a small one. Don't worry. Ankle. Where are you putting it? Ankle. My ankle. Yeah. Ooh. So you're never going to the beach again. What is the? Fuck it. What you do should, you mean? You should look at the CLG logo and see how like how easy it is to morph it in a in a second tattoo session into a different team logo or, or into something else <laughs> just just have like a backup plan for that tattoo uh, anyway right, thank cool. you brooksy for calling in and thank you for supporting the show i'm in thanks peace by the way peace. before you go mark uh and to grab the next one i think i will say two things one i think if you look at clg at all all the issues they're having they all go back to one man, Matcom. Matcom, who's in chat right now. I think he's the reason all these things happened. Also, we were looking at the standings, and FlyQuest has a pretty rough path ahead of them. I actually wonder if they might, like some snafu could happen, and they end up not making it. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty possible. Because they, so, yeah, they, they have 100 Thieves, but they also have... But who knows, maybe 100 Thieves will put in their academy team. I mean, they could very conceivably go one and three and end up eight and ten in outside playoffs. Yeah, they've got to play TL. They've got to play C9, Golden and... Guardians, and 100 T. Yeah. Oof. Yep. A tough one. Anyways, I'll get the next caller. Yep. All right. Uh, shouting out a couple people. Thank you to Sangium for gifting five subs to the channel. Very generous of you, Sangium. I love it when people give subs because I make money, but also because I think it's nice to see the community giving back to itself. Uh, and you also accidentally gave a sub to Nick Allen, which I find hilarious. Dwayne, thank you for the tri prime. Zephyr Glusumimin, thank you for the nine months. Uh, the guy who owns a hat, thank you for the prime. T Turn 088, thank you for the resub. And Daniel in 92, thank you for the 10 months. Getting into the next call, we've got no, no Poon. How do you say your name? Napone. You were close. Nobody ever gets it right, so don't worry about that. Napone. Well, where are you calling from? I'm calling from South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. We're getting a lot yep. of... Indiana's in the south, right? Can we say that? Midwest. It's Midwest. actually in the north. All right, whatever. <laughs> um, getting a lot of people from that area, like Georgia, Texas, Indiana. Yeah, that... Yeah, you're right. That would be the absolute opposite of where I am. Close. Nice. <laughs> Here's the thing. Geography, not that useful. No. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and just say it. I haven't needed it. I got a GPS. I still love you, Travis. Now, Pun, what do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Um, I want to talk about uh, things that Riot and the broadcast crew can do to improve the quality of the broadcast, mainly Ooh. to bring in and retain new viewers i've been talking to a couple of my you boys can't fire me. <laughs> can't, can't, can't Listen, fire you you don't have that power ah <laughs> uh, shit all right well thanks for having me have a good night guys <laughs> <laughs> um i think that um i've been talking to a couple of people in chat uh like dosed and let giving them shout outs um but they kind of have the same idea that really the original viewer base of league uh, has always traditionally been players, the player base, people who play League, they want to watch the pro scene. Um, but as the eSport scene uh, expands, production, quality, um, other games, um, everybody's getting into it. I think Riot has always done a good job at keeping up with their production quality because there hasn't always been too many standards, so they haven't actually had to meet too many standards. But it's it's rising and they've met the rise but i think they need to continue to meet that rise and that includes bringing in new viewers and retaining them and i think that that includes viewers that are not necessarily um league players uh, may not be as experienced or skilled players like i've been around since so, the very end of season one sorry because this is i have to cut you off because it's actually relevant to what you're saying Mm -hmm. uh, did you see an article that I believe it was the chief of the European LCS, of the LEC, or the chief marketing? 
And what he was saying was that they are actually not focused on bringing in viewers that do not play League of Legends. They are not focused on bringing new viewers because if they simply focus on League of Legends viewers, they can get up to 4x the current viewership. That's just because of of the giant surplus of casual League of Legends players compared to the esports bubble. So we are actually in a tiny little fraction of the entire League of Legends eco space. They have no need to go after new eyeballs that have never seen League of Legends, but only after the guys that are already playing that just play ARAM ranked or or not ranked or or even ranked without watching esports. So they don't actually care it seems to me with an article like that about getting new viewers that don't have a that, legends experience that totally makes sense um i definitely get that i definitely get what they're coming from and there's nothing wrong with that i think that like i have a lot of friends i used to play more seriously back in like season two season, season three but now i don't a lot of my friends don't really play seriously um into aram and stuff but they've been playing casually for years and nothing has gotten them to watch esports the the lcs scene so far so i definitely agree that that's definitely an important market but i think that it would be in their interest to continue to 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 start and to continue expanding uh into the non-player base viewership based. Brums, can i ask you a question i yeah, think sure. when i look at overwatch league viewership i feel like overwatch league has done a tremendous job of having pretty solid good viewership despite the fact that i feel as though anecdotally their player base is shrinking a lot you know like i feel like less people are playing overwatch but their viewership continues to stay stable or grow and that has been pretty remarkable to me i'm curious if you have any insight into what's going on there do you think that people who don't play overwatch are pl- are watching overwatch league do you think that you know like what what is their their viewership where does that come from what does that look like etc well i believe they have client integration if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. so i bet a big part of viewership is actually helped by that um which would I mean, it would explain it, right? If you have a pretty large player base and then you have that, because I don't think that League is just starting to use it, but it's not like it's literally in your face. Like when you open the browser, it's there. Like esports is live right now. Right. Um, Yeah, the autoplay, the Twitch. Yeah, and they've gotten a ton of banners. I mean, did you see that they put the ads for the Overwatch League when it launched in Times Square and Souls trains in the like busiest stages? Do you think that that gets people who don't follow or don't play overwatch to watch overwatch league i don't know the retention rate i have no idea what i would but what if it's if it's anything more than zero i mean i think you know the kind of cost of uh customer uh, cost of customer acquisition i can't fucking talk cost of customer acquisition yeah i doubt that spamming general population areas with ads is worth the dollars the best case scenario from doing that is that you would remind people who already play league that hey there's this thing the lcs that you should check out and you're doing it through a means that's not just on the computer uh because this is once again anecdotal but i i've talked to a lot of people about you know oh, how'd you get into esports like what, what do you enjoy and almost never is it like oh i heard about the lcs first and then i started watching and then i found league like I, I don't think, and I haven't heard anyone make the case, like, like with data to back it up, make the case that, like, it is a good thing for promotion outside of the game. Like, it's great for retaining your players and giving them something to invest in, um, but it's not, like, an outreach program, you know? It's not a way to bring in new people. Um, so I don't think you should worry about people who have never played League before enjoying it i think you should worry about people who haven't played league very much being able to understand and enjoy it well that actually kind of plays into my actual idea of how they can achieve gaining um um, a larger viewer base uh, with with outside of their core fan base and that's i got this idea i was watching a game on uh, saturday um i think it was FlyQuest and maybe clutch whoever they're whoever FlyQuest was playing and uh, Azale, uh, I, I've never seen this before, so I don't know how long it's been around, but he was able to highlight 
um, the two champions or the champion he was talking about in the KDA item HUD at the bottom center of the screen as he was talking about it. And for me, I knew exactly what he was talking about. I didn't need that little visual cue, but I realized that's a pretty big thing for somebody who has no idea what he's talking about for say, like, you know, I, I talked to my parents and some of their friends about the league that don't know anything about it. So they wouldn't have a clue what was going on if they watched it. But something like that would really help them. It would be a visual cue. It would help them uh, establish what's going on, what the casters are saying. And I think little things like that could really help. Um, as And broadening on that whole idea would be just like being able to draw on a screen like a, a traditional teleprompter. Um, certain things like when we, we can all see the cooldown when uh, somebody's flash is down. So if you understand the general idea of what's happening in that scenario, we, we know that they can't use the spell. We know we can see the visual on the side of the screen, but what if there was a visual that kind of So you're, you're just talking about literally having assets on the screen that help highlight what they're talking about. Exactly. I think that would help the more casual viewer, the less experienced viewer, oh. and I think Whoa. it could help expand the uh, advertisement range uh, to other outlets. So what if the casual the viewer doesn't actually want to learn? Well, right? Maybe the casual viewer just actually just wants to look at it and be like, nice. Or my friends watch this. Like, I'll watch this with my with my. Or friends. what if the casual yeah. viewer is just not interested in sitting down in the first place? Right. Like, I think that stuff is really helpful, and I don't think that they shouldn't, they should avoid it. But step one is getting people to sit down and look at the broadcast. And I'm not right. quite sure that people who haven't played League of Legends have any interest in making that first step. I think it could just be something that if, if you're, if you've never watched it before, or you've never had much of an interest before, but suddenly you can keep up with the broadcast in a way that you weren't able to before, it could help retain those new viewers and actually turn them into. I mean, here's where I will agree with you. The on-screen HUD is abysmal for anybody who's w looking to watch for the first time. There it's is so busy. much data that is constantly on the screen. Um, yeah. They planned on, and they showed in the past, an experiment where they were trying to come up with like a cleaner UI. And then I think they just got flamed out on Reddit, and then they just never touched it again. I don't know, ever know what happened to that project. I, I did a video about this years ago about how I felt like the the on-screen experience was pretty bad. So I I think that's the type of thing where it can help the current user base as well as perhaps make it more approachable for people that are coming and watching for the first time. So I'll agree with you on that. I'm just not sure that there's a large amount. I, I have a hard time and I'm skeptical to the idea that you can convince a lot of people who have never played League before to watch competitive League of Legends in general. Just, can, just tell your friends directly you want them to watch this with you. I mean, there's a there's not a lot of people who have raced a race car uh, on racetracks around the world or have played a game of football in the NFL, but they find it for some reason they find it engaging, and interesting to watch. I don't know if very many people find it's existed like, for hundreds of years. I think well, NASCAR's... also most people have driven a car, maybe not a NASCAR, but they've driven a car or they've played right. football. They've thrown a football. Not also, in the NFL, but they've played football. Much I like believe I heard. The LCS, but they've played League of Legends. I believe right. I've heard that NASCAR viewership is plummeting as well. So that's, and I don't know how NFL viewership is, but um, I I think those are maybe not the best corollary. Like esports, the t games involve Rocket League is maybe the only thing where I feel like you could potentially have people who don't play the game watch it and enjoy it, um, because the rest of the games are so complex that it's it's kind of painful. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I think that's why, as much as it pains me and and probably you guys too, like I don't mind the HUD the way it is now and everything that I see because I understand everything's going on and it would pain me to dumb everything down. But I think it could help viewer base potentially. Yeah. I think I, it's listen, I, I like it. I like the illustrations on screen. It was Azale who was doing them the most. Uh, he does like the arrows and lanes. I think we could use some more things other than that, but like, I think it's a great start and like, there's no reason not to have it. Like even in pro sports, like you are saying, like if it's not the, like, we're really going to break the game down and teach you, even if it's just to illustrate, you know, like they'll circle the two safeties right. in football and be like, look at these two safeties. They're in cover two. And they're not really saying it. They just draw circles around them because who the fuck cares? Why not? Exactly. And it's fun. 
So like, yeah. I think that kind of stuff can absolutely be included. Hey, uh, ju- not to open a can of worms here, but the other thing I wanted to ask you about crumbs, because it's something I've been thinking about in the, in the recently, the Overwatch League, I think has a much stronger female viewership base than League of Legends and LCS. And I don't know if this is something that you've Do you noticed. Mean attendance, but... like in person attendance, is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. And I would guess right? that, that, that also that's the is... only that's the only thing that right, really right. Yeah, we don't have demographic data. But yeah. if you pull in person attendance and you try to like if, if that's the the sample that you are pulling from to try to correlate out to the rest of the viewers audience, I think, you know, you would probably think more women watching Overwatch League than uh, men by percentage in comparison to LCS. Uh, uh, do, you, do you think that's probably a fair assessment? Uh, I've never really paid attention to how many women are in a studio at, a, at, at one time, to be honest. Uh, I guess. I, I think the Riot tournaments probably have just as much. I just see it as the same percentage, really. Mm. All right. No, it's not worth going down the whole thing. That's not something that All right, thanks for calling in, Opo. We're going to go. Uh, Nopo, <laughs> do you have any final thoughts? Uh, I just wanted to shout out you guys. Uh, I'd like to mention, Mark, I love everything that you and everyone on the desk have done and continue to do. I know it's, uh, I feel like it's kind of underappreciated sometimes. It's not necessarily what everybody comes to watch because it's not the games, but I think it's a really important part of the show. And so I think you all do a really great job. And Travis, I've been a longtime viewer of your interviews, and so I'm happy that you're still doing them, and they continue to get better and better all the time while still staying the same, because that's just how we like our Travis interviews, right? Just 100% pure Travis all the time. So thank you. Thank you. And Crumbs, I'm uh, I'm glad that you're back. I, I've never, I, I have watched uh, Overwatch before, just when it was a novelty thing, when it was just coming out, but I've really never watched it because I've never played the game. So I'm uh, super glad that you're back. I uh, love always hearing what you have to say, and uh, welcome back. Thanks, man. Thanks Look so much. This, this Thanks have so much for having me, guys. Good night. All right. Wow, that's impressive, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get the last caller, huh? Yeah. Last caller. Go on. Uh, a couple of shout-outs. We've got... Let's see. Raging Pianist gifted a sub Hello? to Risen Lazarus. Rooksy gifted a sub to Osama. By the way, you know that guy said the last thing was his counterpoint, right? He's like, oh, I've never played Overwatch. watched Overwatch because I've never played it. Mm. Right? He just made his entire counterpoint. That's true. <laughs> Rooksy gifted a sub to Osama, who I think is Otto, who is possibly in our chat and was watching as Mark ripped into him. Uh, Raging Pianist gifted a sub I to I didn't Crumbs. even insult his play. Congratulations, I just said... uh, Crumbs. Sexy Apple sub uh, Baby Mochi hosted me with 24 viewers. That's what I'm talking about. We got 24 more people watching this. And Jack the Beck, thanks for the Prime. Uh, thank you, everyone. We're on our last call now. Welcome to the show, Pebbles. Pebbles, where are you calling from? Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, calling from New Zealand. Ooh. New Zealand. Okay, first international caller of the night, outside of NA at least. Uh, How is New Zealand right now? Um, well, just coming out of summer, so it's still pretty warm. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for calling in. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, so I wanted to talk about Boy Boy's tweet, the the one in relation to Afro Moon, the Reddit posts. Oh, um, this is the Afro Moon call. Okay. So, saving the best for last. Nice. Lay, lay it out. Lay it out. Disagreed with the first caller, but then, uh, sorry to the first caller, but I thought he was a bit all over the place, and I wasn't really sure what he was talking about, but um. I just wanted to say that like I wholeheartedly agree with Boy Boy and I suppose indirectly double lift about the bullying towards Afromu from the Lee community and that it isn't warranted and that the Reddit community has been doing this like excessive criticism which we saw last year with Bjergsen. Just to clarify, I'm like not saying that criticisms for mistakes or bronze plays aren't welcome. Like that 60 second Afromu where he was like sitting in the brush versus TSM, like that was pretty terrible. Um, or like, I also like the moment that High brought up list analyst desk with Alistar and how Bang Eden versus Sejuani. Like, I think that's all fair to criticize. Um, 
I just think that the community has been like far too ruthless in stating things like um, Afro is terrible now and needs to retire or doing this for the money or like the other excuses because I think in a logical discussion there can be many factors to explain 100 Thieves poor performance necessarily rest on Afro's shoulders um, which I think is like similar to TSM last year and how their problems didn't rest entirely on Bukes and being washed up and unmotivated. So uh, a couple things here. One, definitely agree with you on the subreddit stuff being a little bit... The, the leak subreddit, for some reason, a friend of mine mentioned this to me recently, just feels a little bit more toxic and angry and bitter and negative lately. And I, I've seen this in the past, and then it kind of gets back to normal. I'm not sure what causes it, but, uh, you know, like I had an interview this past week with Moon who was talking about how great it's been being on CLG and people in the comments all just went there to like flame the organization. People have been going chasing after me. People are really mean about Aphromo and hundred T and all these different things. So don't know what's going on there. Uh, but yes, broader conversation here. How, how valid is it whenever players are targeted by the community um, and criticized in such a strong way? Mark, I want to go to you cause I'm really curious what your take is. You tend to have pretty fan, friendly takes on these things you mean like i align more with fans you i because you are from i assume this is because you're from boston and <laughs> you're a sports fan you tend to have no pity for anyone who is ever playing the game or on camera or anything like that you're like yeah fans should be able to rip in or do whatever well i think they should be allowed to do whatever that doesn't mean i don't think that doesn't make them assholes uh you know so i think i kind of agree with with boy boy on the point where like when you start attacking people's character or something like that and like he's just there collecting a paycheck like that's just ridiculous um and i think personal attacks should be not allowed or like not they should be downvoted no shuffle to personal attack like you shouldn't be banned from posting them but like what the fuck are you saying really like those kinds of things i'm i think are 100 percent true uh, so kind of similar to you, I think, but like people always take it too far because the, the real problem comes from, from what I can tell from the internet is that the people who didn't like Aphromoo were kind of always there. They just weren't getting upvoted before. And the people who liked Aphromoo and would defend him can't talk right now because they're fanboys and yada, yada, yada right now because he's doing bad. And then there's like the clump of people in the middle who will get swung by whatever is most true right now. And so like, or most upvoted. People, Right. Well, they're yeah. the ones doing the upvoting because oh, I see what Afro, was, Afro was on the last place team now. So in post, Afro was never good, should never have won his MVP. This yeah. guy sucks. He's in it for the paycheck. You can tell he doesn't care because he has no passion, yada, yada, yada. And then the person who is just waffling in the middle is like, yep, agree, upvote. And they don't really put any thought into it. So I defended Afro, you know, on uh, the show I did with Loco where I was like, I think he deserved that MVP and he's he's pretty good usually and he's he's playing bad right now, sure, but like that's not indicative of his whole career. He's always been a low energy guy. His interviews have always sucked balls. This is not a new thing. Like he's had some good ones in the past. He's but had I do, some good ones, but, but, but he's the, always been a coin flip going into an interview. His average interview week 5 of the LCS is garbage. You interview him after he wins LCS or like a really insightful interview sometimes they're good like he's, he's not 100 percent a terrible interview but like sometimes he just doesn't give a fuck and you can feel it yeah um and so like i don't think it's fair to suddenly because he's losing to look at his low energy in his interviews and be like this guy doesn't give a shit about his team or something like that so like personally i think a lot of the hate afro is getting is ridiculous because like the things that they're attacking aren't fair i don't think he's playing well i think fans should be entitled to to say what they want um, I just think that they're being fucking stupid right now. So there's this kind of weird thing that I've noticed where people, as this conversation has come up, you have people like Cup of Vladimir, who's in Twitch chat right now, who says people can't take criticism in 2019. Lemefow. Uh, you know, they're just like, it's this, well, what? We can't criticize anyone? Well, You're just, you can't ever say anything okay. critical about anyone? And it's like, no, there's like a, a nuance here, which is, hey, maybe you can calm down and have a more like the thing that I have noticed on the subreddit is it feels like people are taking like pleasure 
and shitting on Aframu. Like, oh yeah, look, 100T lost again. Can't wait hey, to man, go to the thread. I'll put some comments some about like how that. terrible of a person Aframu is and how he's... It's fun. I yeah, get it. What? But I think it's separate but, from Okay, saying... but what's the solution then? So, okay, so if that's what's happening, what are the alternatives? How do you control what people say? You have two options. People change it or mods. If you put mods, that's literally censorship. So you can't have that. So you have to somehow change what people say. You're never going to be able to change what people say. So you're left with the solution that your players probably have to just find a way to ignore it because it's not going to go away. As long as they keep playing, it's going to stay there. Literally. So You might as well learn to roll with it. I, I, I agree that people need to just do their best to cope with it. I disagree with the idea that... Is your cat dying? It's my cat. I disagree with the idea that you cannot try to influence this. Um, specifically, like I, I think there's something in between censorship and mods deleting this stuff and just throwing your hands up, which is what we're doing here and what I've seen some of the pros and other people do online where they say, hey... Maybe everyone should take a step back and think about what they're writing before they write it, or they should consider whether or not this is appropriate. Because when you say things like this, it, it perhaps causes people to be a little bit more discerning on whether or not they're going to upload a comment that seems extra angry. Uh, you know, we're called influencers for a reason, crumbs, and that's because the we person that does the harm is the actual being harmed, man. That's the that's the deep philosophical shit behind it. And so when you're having these. Pl what are you? <laughs> My brain was computing oh, what you said. <laughs> no, like it's serious. Like those, those people will have to learn at some point that being an asshole is really not the greatest thing. Yeah, like so it's probably about targeting the people in the middle that Mark was talking about, where they they get swayed by whatever like the the oh, yeah, biggest the, the, conversation. Uh, you can just click here, like bam, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And and so it's probably things. about having these types of conversations and going out there and discussing this stuff. And so that those people who are not on the extreme ends of the spectrum are more likely to be thoughtful on the subject. I think to um, Travis's point, I think the nuances between criticizing the players, I think you can criticize Afromu or like meme on him for that 60 seconds he sat in that brush. Like I, I personally, I mean, I'm not the greatest player. And what he was doing just sitting there for so long um, and then I think Bjergsen propped the scrying bloom. Yep. Like, I think that's totally fine to meme on Afromu for that. And like, you know, you could make a new kind of meme about it being the new insect, but, you know, you sit and brush for ages and just AFK and then die. But <laughs> okay. I think when you start criticizing Afromu and saying things like um, he needs to retire or, you know, he's only out there for the money, I think that stuff is more detrimental to the conversation around 100T. Who does it hurt, though? Who does it hurt? Let, let's say, okay, let's all assume, because we don't actually know, what if Afro doesn't read Reddit? Let's just throw that out there. Who does it hurt? Who is it actually causing damage to? Who is complaining about this? I if Afro say... doesn't read Reddit, who the fuck that cares? Like, he should not give a shit at that point. The org should be like, okay, let's figure this out. It's more of an indication, like, hmm. What could this mean? And that's it. So, Crumbs, one thing that I saw... So I was a huge StarCraft II esports fan before I became a League of Legends fan. And what I saw and what I have frequently tried to consider as I do videos or, you know, spark conversation or whatever in the League scene is that towards the end of StarCraft II esports, that subreddit became so sort of devour, devouring of itself and its negativity. And then all the, like, the pillars of the community or the, like the... The big names also all became negative and it just sort of fed into the cycle of negativity, which really made it like, I think a lot of the people who just were there because they want to have a good time and enjoy the esport and talk about video games. It made it like this kind of shitty community to be a part of it, and uh, just a bunch of people bailed. And I feel like that's a part of it. And so that has always been something where when I do feel like people are being a bunch of assholes, it makes me less, it makes me not want to engage with that community as much. That's kind of what happens. It's like, I feel like you end up getting people more detached and all that stuff. I think, I, th I think what you're saying though, Travis is like ultimately the right thing that I don't want to censor people unless it's like legitimate hate speech. Right. I think what happens is when bad, shitty, over aggressive takes get too upvoted, the rest of the community 
needs to course correct for them. So us or Voy or Double for these people need to be like, what the fuck are you guys actually saying? And then hopefully, like, you know, if, if it finds the right middle ground. Like, this is obviously the worst hate Afro is going to get, barring him coming out and being like, no, you guys are right. I don't give a fuck. And agreeing, you know, like, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be mitigated from here on. Like, the same way when 100 Thieves got that thread that was like, I hate 100 Thieves. Or like when I got my thread for Europe, like, you know, people hate and then they go back to, yeah. to something else. So like our swings. job... Right, like when the pendulum swings too far, the rest of the community needs to stop it. And I think that's what's happening. So, like, I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, I just think, you know, when people have shitty takes, they're entitled to them. I don't think fans sh shouldn't be not allowed to criticize or even have bad takes. You just, people need to correct the bad takes. And by, and by the way, again, like, this is what I was memeing about earlier whenever I said the, the LMFAO guy. Like, the... There are people in the chat right now who are just saying, Travis wants to censor everyone. Freedom of speech. He's an SJW that wants to just <laughs> burn it all down. And These guys are trolling. What? Actually, one of my, my favorite comments that I loved this past week, and I absolutely loved it, which I know has popped up in other threads before, but it's like that 100 T players visited an orphanage, uh, and it's so sad, to, quote, it's so sad to see the depressed looks on their face, said Jamal, age seven. Or whatever. That was amazing. I love stuff like that. That's a good orphanage. The kids are that happy. Well, my, my point is, I think that stuff is hilarious. I think there's that, and then there's like the people that are just like, oh, I could I could get another thread upvoted right now if I just say that Aphromoo's the worst person on the planet. That was well, my chance. The funny thing is, is people who are like, hate speech isn't free speech. It's like, we're talking about League of Legends. <laughs> like on a League of Legends subreddit, if you say something racist or sexist, it shouldn't be allowed because it has nothing to do with like what we're talking about. That's yeah. <laughs> like that's why it shouldn't like it's a League of Legends subreddit, not like a I will post anything on my mind and it should be accepted subreddit. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like that's why hate speech should not be allowed when we're talking about players. Or, you know. And if you want to have a bad take that Afro's unmotivated and collecting paychecks and you should retire, I'm fine with that. I just think it's wrong and stupid. Yeah. And, by the way, this is my favorite thing, by the way. The community... Well, okay, I shouldn't say the community. There are people in the community. All right, I'm not, I'm not saying everybody in the community is like this way. But the community really likes to hear the opinions of people like myself or Mark or whatever... Whenever we agree with them. What about me? I'm right here. Sure. You too, I guess, Crumbs. And then, no, but people like, <laughs> people like to hear our opinions up until the moment you disagree with them. And then it's like, these people suck. And I, I just find it ironic that it, it's like, hey, I, I love everything these guys say up until the moment they disagree with me. Then they're a bunch of uh, SJW cucks, you know, that hate free speech and are miserable and all that stuff. Do we have our caller still here? Yeah. Pebbles? Yep. Still here. How are you doing, Pebbles? Pebbles. Yep. How, how are you doing? I mean, doing all right. I think um, you're, I think you're lagging out a little bit. But do you have any thoughts on any of this stuff as we, as we wrap up the show? Um, I think just on this topic, I think in relation to Boy Boy, I think there's like a, a huge psychological aspect that you could look into it around the mental health of the players. Um, but I won't go on to that. Oh, sorry, what's that last part, Pipples? You kind of broke up. Riz, they just oh. confirmed that Afro doesn't look at Reddit. Oh, as well. If he yeah, doesn't, yeah, look he at doesn't look at Reddit. Yeah. I think there are other players who look at Reddit, namely Double Lift Boy Boy. And I don't think Double Lift gets affected by it, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, you know, you see people like Boy Boy who have struggled with things like depression and anxiety. Um, and dealt with things like suicide, and you can see how these kind of opinions could affect players who have mental health problems. So I think there's a conversation around that that could happen. But yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I do think it is expensive. important for players and and the organizations, by the way, that they are part of, to try to help yeah. folks like distance themselves from the. I've got sort a great analogy for this. Up. Go ahead. Okay, yep. let's say you're walking, you're walking somewhere. You're in, you're in your house and there's smoke that comes into your house. You start coughing. It's clearly killing you. What do you do? 
you walk away. That's because when you started coughing to, to tell you, the coughing tells you, I need to get away from this. If you're doing something, let's say you pay attention to what Reddit is saying about you, and that's men making you mentally sick in the same way, and you feel depressed, the depression is the coughing. It should say, okay, I should get away from this, and you get away. Mm. It's not an addiction. It's literally a sign that tells you, stop doing this. So you're saying uh, people need to avoid stuff yeah, that makes them feel shitty. you online. are online, like, yes, like specifically online, like basically online addiction, if it is causing you the harm, you get away from it and it helps. Yeah. I would say I'm not enough of a mental health uh, professional or educated enough to know exactly how that mechanism works. But what I will say is if it does bother you, you should not read it. Like I'm someone who I think does a decent job dealing with, with uh, whenever there's hate about me, I, I really don't care. Um, but if you are someone who cares, don't don't go like looking for it or seeking it out. Like if yeah. you know you had a bad game, or like we we would ban Reddit as a team. We would ban social media if we were like on a big losing streak because we know people get affected by it. And you know not everyone followed it, and people would still check their phones. But like you know as a team, we would say, okay, we're getting shit on. We know we're not playing well. We don't need people speculating what's wrong with the team. We know what's wrong. Don't read Reddit for the yeah. next like two weeks. I think I mean yeah, I think I that's what Crumbs was getting at. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like, like if it, if that's the part that hurts you, just turn it off. I mean, yeah. I to wrap this up from from my perspective, I think people just shouldn't be assholes, and I think the people that act like assholes and then try to say it's my right to be an asshole, they're completely correct. It is your right to be an asshole. That doesn't mean that you're not being an asshole. It doesn't mean that people aren't going to call you out on being an asshole. Uh, Pebbles. Final thoughts, anything you want to say as we uh, wrap up your call? Uh, two things that I think could be cool to this conversation. Um, it'd be awesome if you would do, and I'm sure you've already thought about this, do some following around the other people in the organizations. So like doing some interviews or documentaries of teams and like the analysts, the analysts and the sports psychologists and what they do and what their role is and like a real breakdown. Because maybe that could be one way we could like brush off some of the responsibility onto them instead of constantly yeah. <laughs> blame the analyst. Um, nah. <laughs> I think one more thing is uh, if you if you ever come to New Zealand, hit us up. Yeah, dude. What's your number? Yeah, like, what what is it? What part of what part of New Zealand? Oh, uh, I mean, New Zealand's very small. So, <laughs> <laughs> were you like, in the Lord of the Rings? Well, sorry, Auckland. So yeah, I'm like right by the Lord of the Rings thing. Right. Well, I, in my heard, town. I heard something insane like, you know, 50% of New Zealand was in the Lord of the Rings or was a part of the production. Oh. So I, I, every time I meet no. someone from New Zealand, I'm like, were you a part of Lord of the Rings? Or no, like 1% if that, not even 1%. 50%. I've heard, I've heard there's more sheep in New Zealand than people. Mm. Yeah, what that's a sheeple. It's a big stereotype. <laughs> uh... Pebbles, I really want to go to New Zealand. I hope it happens sometime. And I will probably forget to look you up if I do. Ah, oh, all good. Thanks so much for calling in. Hey, thanks for that. Have a good one. See it. All right. So that yeah, I can wraps talk to up. callers forever. This is really funny. Yes. Yeah, people come on the show. They really enjoy it because you, you get... All sorts of different people. I mean, we even even had some of the crazier people on the show this episode. You think the guy who said TL can make it to finals at MSI was crazy? I love that guy, dude. I love that no, guy. We asked, this like, is... have you watched anything? He's like, no, I have not. But don't don't confuse me with the facts, okay? <laughs> yes. I mean, that's and that's what's fun about the show is you never know what you're going to get. And people, like, again, you go on the dive, you know, resident sleeper, resident sleeper in the chat. <laughs> um, and they're just going to say the same normal stuff, like... Oh, you know, I, this team looks good. They have the chance of doing this. You come on this show and people are like, Optic is going to win Worlds this year. And you're just like, <laughs> what? this is a conversation I would never be able to have in any other situation. Yeah, that's true. I think the, the best ones are sometimes when people make points that like you realize are just like, wow, I did not realize that, but you're 100% correct. Right. The best yeah. one, some international guy called in when we were on topic about like, should wildcard regions get as much like game time as they get to get versus top teams like with a new play-in format or something? And 
he was like, yeah, even though we think we're going to lose, like, we still want that shot. Like, isn't it the same with you versus Korea? Like, you know you're going to lose, but you get that chance. And I was like, holy shit, that's 100% yeah. what it is. Yep. Yep. Anyway. What region was he calling in from? Uh, uh, I, for, I forget. It was, South it was some America, Latin somewhere in South America. Yeah. Maybe Brazil. Yeah. Uh, all right. That wraps up the show. Uh, Crumbs, do you have anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to plug here at the end? Uh, no, I didn't want to play anything, man. I could be doing this all day. Just, uh... Thanks for coming on the show. It was fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll get we'll have you back you. on more often. Yeah, the mic the mic issues earlier. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll figure out if if uh, if you come on frequently enough, we'll grab you some. I'll grab you a mic. Uh, Mark. What oh yeah. By the way, what what you, know, you have a chance here to plug yourself, Travis? Give me give me the latest plug you're trying to reach out to. Recommend me a new mic because I really need one. I, well, I don't I have a. I would, par, I would personally go with Astro because I tried it one time and it fit my big ears. Yeah. So well, I I am sponsored by Alienware and would tell you their headsets are great. I don't have a sponsor for desktop microphones, so we can talk about that later. Uh, Mark, what's your shout outs plugs? What do you want to say? Uh, should be a second episode of the D and D show coming out this week, so look out for that. Okay. What is it? By the way, you should have led with the intro that you guys made. I think that was the best. Uh, it was just for the first episode. We didn't lead with it okay. because we didn't. Yeah, we want. Oh, to I saw like, your. I saw a little bit of your high school offline TV thing. You're doing the oh, yeah. voice, the professor voice. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm probably the best part of that show. You know what? I did stop after a little bit. I was like, oh, I guess. Okay. There you go. Uh, end of the show here. One, we have a podcast version of this show. Feel free to go hit that up if you want to listen to it in the car or on an airplane or something. Uh, two, I'm going to South by Southwest. Uh, say hi to me at the Alienware Outpost. Three, Playmakers is out now. It's going to be hitting Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout the rest of this month. Uh, really love that show. I hope you guys enjoy it. The first interview is with Certainly T, who is a controversial person. And I think it's a pretty fun conversation that we have about who he is as a person his background and i think that is it thanks everyone for watching this has been hotline league episode 67